Parklands is an extraordinary example in terms of the work that the school is doing within the community, um, you know, the, the work that Chris Dyson has, had, has done um, to um, uh, bring families in over Christmas, providing presents, all of those things. But the other point, and this is the thing when you go into Parkland School, is the work that he has done to raise the self-esteem of young people in his school. And they have gone from being the worst performer in maths education to what, one of the top nationally through the work that he's done with, his, with timetables in particular. I urge any of you who don't know about this work to go and see um, what he's actually done. And the biggest thing for me, um, being concerned about particularly young lads falling behind in education, this, this head teacher has made it cool to study maths. It is extraordinary how he has done it. And I think, you know, there are obviously other examples around the city of fantastic practice in appalling circumstances and people really rising up and above and beyond um, what they're asked to do um, if you look at in, in a pure contractual basis. So we need to um, recognize that extraordinary work give um, credit where it's due, but really reinforce our commitment to doing everything that we can to make sure that schools get the, the funding they need, that they're not faced with losing classroom support assistance, that they're not having to make the really difficult decisions that mean so many children don't get the, the richness of their educational experience that they should. Um, I do want to um, reference the... the um I'll work on three, together on six, one, two, three, four, five, six, together. I'll work on three, together on six, one, two, three, four, five, six, together. Here we go, man. I'll work on three, together on six, one, two, three, four, five, six, together. Right here. I wish for you to stand up for what you care about. Let's get it. And this starts right now. Yes, everyone in the room. It's all us. Clean it on three. One, two, three. three I hope that together we create something that the world will remember. What we see changes who we are. When we act together, the whole thing is much more than the sum of the parts. I came to teach and try to make that noise. That is brilliant. Thank you. That's amazing. I love our It's true. I love that Here we are at the Tetley in, uh, in Leeds, the uh, weekender, celebrating making, selling creativity, celebrating community. We're here with uh, Playful Leeds with their shipping containers full of toys, families having loads and loads of fun. And over there, over there somewhere, we've got the Steam Co. pop-up, Summer of Love Art pop-up making rockets. 
Let's go and check it out. Hi, I'm from Leeds Dads and I'm here to support fathers, bringing fathers closer to their children, spending quality time with their children. I love the rocket activities for families, mums and dads, bringing them together, doing really lovely activities together. What a great day, just lovely to see all this lovely access to creativity and such a really great vibe here today. Um, so I lecture at Leeds Beckett University on the Playwork degree and this is just the guys of Playbox and all, all of the arts and crafts that are available, it's just fantastic. Had a super afternoon down here at the Tetley weekend uh, working with Playful Leeds and a whole range of um, organisations, Leeds Dads and so on. But I think that the regret I have in a way is that I didn't see anybody I recognised from Parklands or off the Seacroft Estate or a number of the other states around the city. Maybe those children, maybe those communities don't get into the city as much, I don't know. But the thing about Steam Coast, what we want to be doing is taking days like today, the stuff that you see behind me. We want to take the steam code drop trucks into school communities across Leeds, across Yorkshire, across the country. And that's what we're asking for in this tour. We're asking for organisations to sponsor steam code drop trucks containing everything you need to run a steam code day. An absolute wowzers of the morning, innovation, technology. Oh dear, that was a bit rude, wasn't it? Cutting Chris Dyson off in his prime. Oh dear me. We're getting ready. We're getting ready to roll. We're getting a few things lined up. We had to reconfigure everything late last night. And if it looks like I went to bed at 3.30 a.m., I did. <laughs> I was up at 7. Quick cup of tea. We have got a show and a half lined up for you today. We really, really have. It's going to be, it's going to be an absolutely wonderful. It's going to be a very sunny. It's going to be a very happy. It's going to be very uplifting. It's going to be very joyful. It's going to be a very connected, a very collaborative. It's going to be a very communicative, uh, coming together. It's going to be a lovely day. Last weekend the world lost a great artist, a great musician, a very humble man who wasn't big and brash and out there. A man called Bill Withers, who I'd forgotten how many super amazing songs he did. I need to keep talking over this because it might get tripped out on the um, copyright protection thing at YouTube, I don't know, but I'm not going to talk over the vocal because when Bill Withers starts singing we all need to show some respect. It's a beautiful sunny morning here, wherever you are, wherever I am. I was in Glastonbury the other day, I could be in Leeds today, I could be in London, I could be in Brighton, I could be anywhere, but I tell you what, I'm in a place where the sun's shining, the sky is blue, and I'm so glad to be here with all of you. Hold tight, hands in the air. Okay. We'd like to say that in our opinion it is not suitable for children hey. or for those of you who may have a nervous disposition. And, and I'm sure there's a few head teachers what rolling around at the moment. About. I've spelled Sparkins wrong. I've spelled Parkins wrong. Turn the world inside out. At a time of political division in Britain, the artists wanted to, to make a strong statement of community and solidarity. Are you going to matter? I hope you will. Thanks for your attention. We are live and direct, we're in Leeds. We could be at Parkins Primary at this very minute watching rockets take off well, like this, well, but I'm not. Sat here in Parkins Primary here with, um, with Macaulay and his mum. 
What do you reckon to the rocket launch then, McCauley? Awesome. Awesome? Yeah. Done that a couple of times, haven't we? So mm. what, do you, what, what do you think of the book then there? Being on the front cover of the book. Hold that up for the camera. What do you think of that? I think it's okay. It's amazing. Oh, what do you, tell us again what you would, what do you want to be when you grow up? Train driver. Train driver. Do you play with that train set much? The Lego train set yeah. still? Yeah. I've to, I mainly took it apart and did a massive death ray for my yeah. Lego people. Really? Fantastic. And Karen, exciting day, wasn't it? Really? Last end of term coming up now? Yeah. yeah. Nearly, CA6 nearly over. And you, Three you, weeks. And we had a great time. We went, to, we went to the Science Museum when we were down, didn't we? I remember standing by the locos there. And what, what, what's it meant to you? Did, you know, the, the stuff, the train set, and, and the, the, the stuff we've been Every, doing. Everything amazing. The, the the stuff that he does with it, his imagination is absolutely fantastic. I don't know where it all comes from, to be really? honest. Yeah. I built Lego train stations. And have you um have you have you read stories and you, you read much at home? Yeah. You, you read with him, do you? Yeah. As well. yeah. Mainly reads on his own because that's what he's learnt to do. But barring that, we do sometimes read together, don't we? When we've got time. Yeah. And, and what would your advice be to parents on reading? And yeah, you know, you've just you've just come to the end of year six now. I always think of things I wish I'd done. Is there anything that you, you kind of regret or any advice for parents? Just read more with your children. You mm -hmm. learn more. Connect with your children more as well when you read. More You're going to read that together. Yeah. yeah. Get your dad to read it as well. He, don't, he, he can't read. He could read with you, can't he? Yeah. I can, I can teach him. Exactly. I could teach him how to read. Well, the thing some, some, is sometimes if dads can't read, they like to have people reading with them. And that's all part of the experience, isn't it? Yeah. Lovely. Yeah. Well, thank you so much anyway. Right. Cheers. Macaulay uh, and his mum Karen there from Parklands Primary then. He's now at, um, at the secondary next door off the Seacroft Estate. Fantastic family who've been so, so generous to us at Steam Co. So this is going out to you Macaulay and your sister Kaylin, your mum Karen, I'm sure she's there. It's a wave for all of you and Gareth. Fantastic family, been so supportive and brave and honest and, and hard work and they've helped us out. We ran an event at the uh, community hub up there in Seacroft on a Saturday. They all turned out and I know Karen wasn't feeling too good that morning. Maybe, uh, I don't know, she was feeling a bit sniffy. But we went up there, we've made paper rockets inspired by this incredible book. I'm not going to bore you with that today because we've done that to death. The Rocket Kids story. If you haven't read that book, The Rocket Boys is one of the most amazing books that you'll ever read. Four boys who didn't want to be coal miners, like those Yorkshire lads of many years ago who didn't want to be coal miners. They saw the Sputnik, they learned to make rockets and ended up working for NASA. And next week we're launching the hashtag Rocket Kids Club where we're going to provide a Facebook type platform for young people, kids and their creative carers, mums, dads, aunties, uncles to work with them in a safe way. So we're going to be sharing content. It's going to be free. We're looking for 100 people to sign up for that for free to start with to test it. And then it's going to be free for the next three months for everybody. And I don't know if we're ever going to charge. I don't want to because we want to get some donations to make that available for everybody. And that's the book that Macaulay showed, a little book that he's on the front cover of proudly because he put his hand up in an assembly and asked me a question about the Titanic and told me more than I could ever wish to know about the Titanic and how it was made with steel from Sheffield. A proud Yorkshire lad there. These are the stories that we need to be giving our children because the three greatest gifts, any of you, if you're a parent watching or any of you as a child can ask for your parents, three things you can ask them. One, for the gift of some of their time, five, 10 minutes, and they've got more than time in the world at the moment. So let's find some time for our kids. So number one, give your children your time. Number two, needed that didn't I but number two is give them the gift of stories give them books find books like this in charity shops for pennies or find them online and check out the work of amazing leaders Simon Smith over there in Whitby amazing work bringing books to life and the third thing the third thing you need to give your kids is their art and we say that art I've even got the t-shirt here the I love art t-shirt art is what we call it when what we do connects us as parents as creative carers as communities we need to help our kids aim high. We need to help them dream. We need to help them find their passion. We call it their art. Their art could be painting, photography, cooking, coding, dancing, DJing, graphic design. They could be rockets. It could be robots. And today we've got an amazing, amazing show lined up for you. We are here from Parkins Primary, as I say. And all this week, all this week, we've been celebrating carers, people who care. Thursday night, we went outside last night and clapped for carers in the NHS. We clap every morning in our street for our bin men. 
who are bravely coming out to keep the clean streets clean. They're, they're doing the most critical job. These people are key workers. But there is no greater key worker than us than for us than our teachers and our brave school leaders. And we were absolutely delighted. We, we're a bit cheeky here on Steamco. We rip off um, a few songs here and there to make a point, And sometimes we get permission, sometimes we don't. People like Nar Rogers and, and his colleague there, um, his collaborator, Mert Mercuriades, have, have been incredibly generous to us. But the other night we picked a song which we felt was very appropriate, not least because of the work we've done in Liverpool, how Steamco itself was inspired by a really amazing, inspiring man from Liverpool. How we had a whole week in Liverpool last week. How the other day we, we, we had a, a live link with a fantastic guy from a special school at, 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 at Hard of Hearing Children's School up there in, in, in Liverpool. We've had incredible connections with people like Mr Heaton, Ken Heaton at Florence Melly Primary School in Liverpool, who we've is retiring at the end of the month. So good luck to you, Ken, if you're listening. But the most fantastic thing this week was when we were given permission to share this song with you. So if YouTube crashes us out, if YouTube doesn't let us play this song, we are going to go straight back to them and say we've got permission because Ken Mullins and Pete Hooten, the guys from the farm, the band of the farm, have let us use this song to celebrate our togetherness, to celebrate collaboration and together we will overcome. We will overcome coronavirus. So let's, let's sing this song, let's enjoy this song while I get my act together and we go to our first guest, which I'm hoping is going to be Action Jackson. Hold tight. moment of thanks and togetherness. If you've never bought that song, go out and do me a favour and stream it for those guys. I mean, what an anthem, what a fantastic song. Um, I must admit, I was sort of doing the disco dad sort of deep house stuff back in the days when, when the Liverpool and the Manchester that sound was kicking off. Uh, but Graham Andre um, had a listening session to that the other night, was singing along to that and had Spartacus out. So this is for you, Graham. Graham Andre down there on the Isle of Wight. Absolutely fantastic. I know we're all together today. I know we're all here in spirit. I know that nearly everybody's here with me in Parkins Primary today. It's absolutely fantastic. And I'm really delighted that um, we're, we're all gathered today for, for Good Friday and this very, very special day. Um, because if we can't be afraid to fail in front of our kids, if we can't show them these examples, then we're not teaching them anything. We've got to teach kids to fail and learn and move on. We'll not be afraid to fail. Let's not teach them to fail. A couple of typos in my PowerPoint slides already and a couple of hiccups, but not to worry. I'm going to keep looking down there, making sure my order's on, because I do have a track record of speaking for 10 minutes without, speaking, without turning my order on. 
So it's a big important show today. So we've, I've got my, my son in here monitoring audio, so he's keeping an eye on that and he'll be putting his hand up if it doesn't go right. If you want to comment today, please go to the YouTube channel and comment in the bottom. He's keeping an eye on that. I can't keep up on, uh, on Twitter. I know McCall is probably sat there in Leeds at the moment on the Seacroft Estate, desperately trying to know what on earth I've got going on here. And I'd quite like to know as well, McCauley. But let me just show you, if I can just cut to that. This is the craziness going on on my desk at the moment in front of me. So I have got a laptop here. That's my naughty laptop there with the PowerPoint. That's one of my, son, my son's laptop. And that's the one that's doing all the video streaming there. So that's streaming video live out onto the internet. Then over here, we've got three laptops and they're Skype, what we call Skype clients. So when somebody Skypes in because they want to come on the show, then they Skype in on that. And then here is the box of tricks. This is the killer. This is a box of tricks here that, that literally does my video fading. If I think it's quite difficult doing this back to front. So all these colored lights, every one of those is a video. So that one there is the camera that you can see me on. I'll just press this button here. Watch what happens when I press this button here. See, I come on on the screen there. So that picks that. So that button there makes camera one go live. So if I press that now, you'll see me on a green screen. That's rubbish, isn't it? We don't want that. So let's put that back. Um, so that's the camera back. Then over here, I've got the PC with the PowerPoint and then three computers over here. And then believe it or not, if when we've got somebody coming in for a chat on number eight. So let's make sure, uh, number eight go into my, what's called my PFL window. And I've now got that in a little window. So that is the video of Parkland's playing a little video. And I can move that around the screen. I can make it go up and I can make it go down. I can zoom in and make it go bigger and smaller. This is, I'm sure you'd agree, Macaulay, one hell of a bit of kit, isn't it? And, and our sponsors, LGFL, I'm going to talk about them in a minute, have made all this possible. We're so, so grateful. And there you are. Look, there I am in front of a green bit of sheet. So I think we'd better get rid of that pretty quickly, don't you? Because that's not very convincing and nobody wants to know the truth. Because everybody wants to think I'm up there in Parkins Primary. Everybody wants to think that I'm live today from Parkins Primary with a very, very special man. Um, gosh, three years ago, I went up to Leeds, introduced by uh, Bryn Llewellyn of Tag to Fate. And I said, I need to go into some schools because there's a big event on the weekend and I'd like to go and work with some Leeds schools and introduce me to some head teachers. One of which was this guy, Chris Dyson at Parkins. I went into that school on the Friday morning and a chap came bounding over to me in a big colourful tie, as you see there, and a three-piece suit. And I went to shake his hands, and he, he gave me a big hug. And he said, "Oh, we don't do uh, we don't do shake handshakes here, Nick. We uh, we just hug." And he was booming out the I think it was the gorillas at the time, absolutely fantastic. And that man was Chris Dyson, and he's been a good friend. I had dinner with with Sally and the kids later on that day. That one of the most generous, one of the most caring, considerate, and together people I know. Well, not necessarily together. I wouldn't say he's together at all. And I certainly know more than I am. Um, I think we've all got a little bit of eccentricity in us that keeps us ticking along, that makes it all worthwhile. So that's Chris Dyson. Um, some very, very sad news. Chris was due to be dialing in today and tweeted this morning publicly. So I don't believe this is a secret, but tweeted in that he's been in bed all night. Well, which is good, but he's got hot sweats and is not very well at all. Um, now, who's this beeping in here? So we're like, which one's beeping? Richie. Okay. Okay, so we've got a caller coming in there. That's fantastic. I'm just going to mute him for a second. Um, which, how do I do that? Oh, that's it. Gosh, it's good when it works, isn't it? Gosh, it actually works. Gosh, this is really good. But people are going to start thinking, actually, you've got a rough idea what I'm doing. So somebody, this is really good. So somebody has just dialed in now. And I don't know if I can actually quite believe my luck. Where was I? I was talking about Chris Dyson not being very well. And I can't stress this enough. I'm having a bit of a fun, bit of a laugh here. But these are serious times. These are really, really serious times. I don't need to stress that to you. I'm sure a lot of you saw the Emily Lake make this um, piece on Newsnight the other night talking about how coronavirus is affecting absolutely everybody. And it's affecting some people more than others. Some people who are in tower blocks. I can see three tower blocks out of the window here in uh, where I'm, I'm at the moment. Um, we've got, my son's now looking out to count them. That's typical, isn't it? You had to do that, didn't you? Not to worry. I'm <laughs> okay, there are three tower blocks outside. And, and basically, um, this, this is deathly serious. It is terribly, terribly serious. And minority uh, groups and people in social housing are, are particularly vulnerable. And another sector of the community that's particularly vulnerable are what, I've, what we've called here, not just our hashtag brave school leaders 
but everybody working in a school community to look after our children, to keep them safe and to keep them fed at the moment. And Chris Dyson has become a bit of a flag bearer for those people, not particularly because he wants to be, but he has a profile and he shares that and he uses that. And, and Parkins Primary has been providing hot meals for that community and other schools across Leeds these last two or three weeks. Chris and his team have been in every day during lockdown. They're in today. They may be in tomorrow and Sunday. I'm not too sure. Looking after children who need looking after at the moment and children of key workers. So please, please, next Thursday, when you go out to clap for the NHS and clap for carers, please, please, please clap for our brave school leaders and everybody they work with in their school communities, the teachers, the teaching assistants, the dinner ladies. I usually say caretakers, but Lee Higgins at, Park, at St. Saviour's usually clips around here. Site managers, sorry, Mr. Higgins for that. Stand to I can't say Mr. Higgins without standing to attention. Um, everybody in a school community is doing their bit. And it's very important that we work with our school communities and that we collaborate with them. And today is brought to you by a very special organisation, LGFL, London Grid for Learning, led by a man called John Jackson, who we've been working with, who I was due to do a keynote speech for at the end of April and obviously had to cancel the physical event. But John sat with me and we worked out an idea and we worked out that we could deliver it online, not in Teams, Microsoft Teams alone, not in Zoom alone, not in some fancy Skype thing, but I went to him with an idea of this. I went to him with the idea of putting together a whole digital studio that you see here in a back office where I base Steamco. So you can see I've got technical support down there, totally engrossed. I've got a video screen on the top there. I've got a couple of lights. This is the community lock-in. This is the hashtag community lock-in. This is where we are broadcasting live and direct to the country on four channels. We're doing our Art Connects work. So today is the hashtag Art Connects show. That's okay. Today is the hashtag Art Connects show where we are celebrating the power of art, creativity, technology and people. That's what we say art is. The power of art to inspire our kids in their learning, whether they're learning from home or in school. The power of art to create careers and to fuel the economy. The power of art to engage communities, to work with their schools. The power of art to connect communities and to connect us all. So that's the hashtag Art Connects piece. We're doing a hashtag Rocket Kids Club for all these kids to have a safe place to go and share and create with their creative carers, which might be their parents. It might be their auntie, it might be their uncle, and better times it might be a next door neighbour. It could be a super cool hipster in downtown Leeds or Bristol or Cornwall or, or Shoreditch in London. Creative people who haven't got kids yet, but they can use the power of social media and communities like that that are safe to share and inspire kids with their creativity. The third thing is our hashtag UK Art Takeover. We're going to be doing a whole month of activity and we're doing a Parliament launch come hell or high water. We're doing something in Parliament and then we're going to have a UK tour with the Get Creative campaign, which is the Voluntary Arts and BBC project. And then the end of that month, we're teaming up with the Brewed guys, Ed and Darren, and the thousands of teachers that they bring together on Saturday afternoons in pubs like Hewell's up there in, in Bradford, in Wakefield, sorry. We're going to have a weekend festival, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We're talking to a real festival that's still not cancelled, so we could do it with them, or we're going to do it online, and I'm hoping that Ed Finch will join us later on. And the fourth thing is co-conferences. We're going to be running the LGFL conference. LGFL could stand for London Grid for Learning. It could stand for Leeds Grid for Learning, because it's the National Grid for Learning. They're going national, and they're currently upgrading the broadcast and the Wi-Fi for, for Chris Dyson. So, Chris, if you're watching... Thank you for your love. Thank you for your permission. Thank you for your support. Thank you for tweeting me on Wednesday and saying, hey, Nick, Nick let's do something on Good Friday because I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for you. I wouldn't be here at all if it wasn't for you, Chris Dyson. So thank you so much. I know there's a lot of love coming out to you and I'm sure you're going to get showered with love on Twitter. A lot of people are watching. A lot of people are going to show you their love. But what you are is the embodiment of creativity and people coming together. And I'd like to go now, in fact, I'm going to go back to that in a minute. I just want to brief everybody on a little project. While you're watching this, go and grab your loo rolls. Go and grab your empty cardboard tubes and make art. Forget the telly, forget YouTube. Let's think about you with a double O tube art. There's another typo for you, Mr. Dyson. I'm so sorry, my spag's not very good today. Make some art. Hashtag art of loo rolls. The best people, the best examples we get today. I have got an amazing prize. I keep inventing things on the fly and I've decided we are going to give, 
one of these robots away to the best Lou art, art of Lou rolls today, and that is a robot. I haven't got enough space on my desk, but basically it's a robot that's Lego compatible. You can take the wheels off and you can put cogwheels on it. It's got um, sand clapping ultras on it. It can drive around and find its way out of mazes. And they're normally 45 pounds. I've literally had 30 delivered from Australia where these are made. And we're going to be putting those on our YouTube shop, not on our YouTube shop, our internet shop later if you want to buy one. But I'm going to give one of those to the best art of Lou Rolls that we see today and put those on Twitter or Instagram. I've got my two sons scouring the internet looking for best examples of that. So that's what we want to be seeing there. And later on today we are going to be hearing from this young lad in the left hand corner. Rowan is going to be dialing in with his mum very soon who has made a crane from an electric drill which is just fantastic. So he's going to be coming in and telling us how he does that. Now he's not been in school but that's what I call an education. We've got an amazing, amazing man coming in who makes robots out of Lego that can solve Rubik's Cubes like that one you see in the picture there. I mean, I, I can't do it. I couldn't even put a Rubik's Cube back in its box, let alone solve it, let alone one that looks like that. Delphid Gilday is going to be joining us live at about quarter to 12. And Action Jackson, I don't know what's happened to Action Jackson. He's been a bit tricky to pin down. He's not here at the moment, but I've got an amazing video for Action Jackson, which I'm going to play now because I've just seen that we have an amazing leader, amazing innovator, a new, an author, a broadcaster who's just Skyped in, just down here. But even though I'm pointing over there, it's actually down there. But I have to point over here because it's all a bit of a mirror. I'm actually getting quite good at this. And I want some respect for this, please, Macaulay, up there on the Seacroft Estates. I have nailed this. Down there, but really down there, oh, down there is a person who I just can't believe this guy has just dialed in because he's seen that Chris Dyson can't do this and he stepped up. Now, if I tell you that this is a man who was a head teacher of a school, not unlike Parklands, a school that, be very careful I say this, who nobody else actually really wanted to be the head teacher of. They'd had quite a lot of head teachers over a period of time. This man applied for the job and got it. And he couldn't actually believe his luck. And a lot of people would have thought maybe he could have just not applied and dodged a bullet. He took that job. He turned that school around by making every day at that school like a day at Disneyland. Now, he is an incredibly talented leader. I don't know what he's like on the ukulele. I don't know if he can sing. I've never heard him tell a funny joke. He thinks he's funny, but I'm not so sure myself. And I don't know if you can hear me, so I'll say what I like at the moment. I'm going to share some inspiration from a man. Now, if I look around that, that, that looks like I'm looking at Action Jackson, look, just about to headbutt him. I am going to share one of the most inspiring people that I know. I can't look at buttons. Okay, let's just rewind. Pretend you didn't see that. I'm going to share what Action Jackson hopefully would have done if he'd been on and maybe he may still do. Uh, my name's Action Jackson and I'm sure you know this song that says, I believe the children are... Teach them, Teach them well, help them, well. lead the way. Show them all the beauty they possess inside. Give them a sense of pride. To make it easier, let the children's laughter remind us how we used to. Oh, lovely. Look at that. But here's the sad thing. Our children are busy on Snapchat. They're busy on Facebook. They're busy on YouTube. I believe that one day we're going to have to run a course on how to say hello to a human being. Because really and truly they're stuck on their phones. No more time around the dinner table anymore. Grab your dinner, go upstairs. Dinner on one hand, phone on the other. My thing is helping them to understand that there's greatness within them. When we go into schools and colleges across the UK, we're trying to get them to pass exams. We say, you know, forget exams for a second. You need to understand that there's greatness within you. You need to understand the value of love, respect, determination, resilience, not giving up too easily. I don't get it. Have you tried it? No. So my thing is all about teaching our children to do a couple of things. And the first thing is to dream big. Ever say dream big. dream big. Now, you see, I did that and everybody's like, yeah, what's he doing? <laughs> yeah, if I was in a primary school right now, the kids would be like, eh. <laughs> so for a second, we're going to go into that primary school space for a second. You're allowed to do so. We're on the 30th floor at the Barclays building. Everybody's like, oh, look at that, guys. Like, everybody say, dream big. Dream big. Act now. Act now. Never give up. Never give up. You're, You're amazing. amazing. You're not singing it. Come on. See, that's the message we Dream need to drum in their heads. Oh, yeah. Act now. Never give up. You're amazing. Sing it to someone. Go. Dream big. Dream big. 
Right now. Ever give up? Cause you're amazing. Come on, come on, say it. Dream big. Act now. Never give up. Never give up. Cause you're amazing. Everybody, everybody, go. Dream big. Act now. Never give up. Cause you're amazing. Now stop. How amazing is that man? An incredible guy, an inspiring motivational uh, guru, whatever. A lot of people claim to be motivational people, but Action Jackson and the Fix Up crew are just, just incredible. And Chris Dyson is a similarly incredible guy. And if I had the money, I did try before Christmas to rent this truck, Excalibur, which you press a button on and a video screen pops out of the roof. And at the moment, it's just my head that pops out of the roof. But that's the celebration. That's what we need to do. And if I press this button here and press this button here, we can replace that video there with an equally, equally inspiring man. Richard Gerber, are you with us? Can you speak to us, please? I am. How are you? Yes, it works. Yay. Hooray. <laughs> My goodness, Richard. Oh. No pressure, but I've, I've just kind of said that, you know, you, you are, you've got a similar trajectory to Chris Dyson. Just tell us your story in a nutshell. We've got mums, we've got dads, we've got a few teachers, leaders. Keep it broad. Go for it. You're, I don't need <laughs> yeah, to tell I you will, how to play this game. I do, I want you to know I was listening. And oh, no! the thing about me being <laughs> funny, well, that's it. Frankly, I'm done now. I'm, I'm, uh, <laughs> you're not getting any more from me. Look, I mean, I'm humbled to be here and humbled to be able to stand in for a, a man who is as extraordinary as... Chris's. Um, what can I tell you about my journey? It started a very long time ago. I became a head teacher in 2001, as you said before, of um, a school that was really struggling. It had had eight school principals in 10 years. Uh, it had had no head teacher for 18 months. Um, I applied for the job, didn't get it because I had any particular talent or ability. Uh, I got it because uh, it turns out I was the only candidate. Um, I was the only candidate because it turns out that this school was considered to be so poor that the government of the time were considering closing it down. Now, moments like that are just such powerful opportunities for creativity. I think it's far easier to be innovative in any context and particularly in, in a school transformation context when things aren't going well. You've got nothing to lose. So to cut a very long story short, as you've already hinted at on the show, and it's brilliant, by the way, um, is uh, the checks in the post, I asked mate. My team, I asked my team one question: How do you turn our school into somewhere as exciting as Disneyland? Um, and that led to three core things: we uh, we created a town within the school because we wanted our children to understand that everything they they learned was for a context, it was rich in experience and for a reason. So they had their own TV station, their own radio station. They had cafes, shops, museums, the whole works. We used that experience to transform our curriculum, which sadly I don't think I would be allowed to do in the current climate. Um, we created a curriculum which was around four core themes rather than a disparate number of subjects. The themes were communication, enterprise, culture and well-being. And the third thing, was we wanted our kids to understand university was potentially a place they could aspire to. You know, because for a lot, of, a lot of kids, particularly in, in tough and challenging backgrounds, university is something posh kids are entitled to. And the way we did that was by opening our own university on a Friday. So our kids didn't come to school, they came to university <coughs> and studied a whole range of different courses, everything from pet care to arts courses to contemporary dance. Um, and hopefully my incredible team created a magical environment. And as a result, you know, the community thrived in, in every way you care to measure us. Um, but most importantly, we'd achieved the three crucial words that I think have become my mantra really ever since, which are, you know, which is education should be rich in uh, a celebration of living, should be all about powerful learning, and most importantly, should be filled with laughter. Fantastic. I, I, you're such a, an inspiration, Richard. Now, I'm not going to sort of overly embarrass you on this one, although you're thinking, oh my goodness, where's he going now? I, I'm sure that's um, not far from your mind at the moment. Um, 
you you published a book last year, Education Manifesto for Change, and and the, on the front of that, I don't tend to read an awful lot of books, and I'm good job that I got the gist of your book from a little yellow sticker on the front, and it said it was Alison Peacock, I think it said that it's very important that it was about collaboration, and I, you know if I had my act together, I'd have all this stuff lined up, but I've, I've got books about robots, I've, but I haven't got your book to hand, I'm afraid. I think it's on the stack over there. Frank Cottrell Boyce, brilliant book on robots. Um, Actually, hang on. Let's just do some book stuff, shall we? This is the book that everybody really needs to be reading at the moment. Michael Rosen, Good Ideas, How to Be Your and Your Child's Best Teacher. Anyway, enough of the ad breaks. Hopefully that gets 200,000 retweets. Uh, Richard, collaboration. You used that word on your cover. You used that through the book. You spoke at an event generously for us called The Art of Collaboration. Again, I don't want to have to stress the, the sort of lay terms, but what is, it's a fairly big fancy word. What does collaboration mean to you in that context? And what does now and what's happening in our schools and our communities locked down with amazing mums that we're about to see today teaching their kids? What does that mean to you and, and that word? Well, you know what? For me, it goes back to a phrase that I would picked up on many, many years ago. It's, it's one that's known to, to many people. But within the context of what we're talking about, um, for me, it, it's all about that old African proverb, it takes a village to raise a child. And, and I've been absolutely passionate about that since my early days as a teacher. Um, and really, uh, what I think I've seen over the last decade or so um, has been both inspirational and worrying in equal measure. Because I think as a system, um, education has become increasingly divisive. I think we've found a, a resurgence in polarization, you know, divisive terms like traditionalist versus modernizer versus, you know, all, all these kinds of words, knowledge versus skills. And, and I think it's been wholly unhelpful um, because the truth about education is everyone involved in it passionately wants the best for their kids. And when I say involved in it, I'm not just talking about schools and teachers and head teachers and teaching assistants and admin people who work in the schools. I'm talking about parents and carers and grandparents, local businesses and local charities. And the truth is that if we're going to prepare our children for the challenge of what was going to be even before this crisis, an exponentially changing and uncertain time, then we needed to pull our resource, our wisdom, our knowledge, um, our passion to come together, to find a way to find common ground and create a vision for education that was worthy of our kids. Um, and so really, when I wrote the book, what I wanted to do was explore that. I wanted to explore the commonalities, the things that we all shared, the experiences we could all bring to each other that could maybe catalyze a new vision for the future of education. And I think that's more necessary now than it's ever been. You know, what we're all living through is, is extraordinary in, in so many ways. What our children are living through and what they're seeing is going to define their outlook for the next 10, 15, 20, maybe more years in the same way that our parents and our grandparents' outlook was defined, defined by their experiences of living through and, and the results of the Second World War. I think our kids are going to be living through something similar. And so I don't think there has ever been a more important time where we commit to being collaborative, to working together, to ensure that our kids have the wit, wisdom, creativity, innovation, and spirit of enterprise that it's going to take to ensure that they don't just survive over the next few decades, but thrive. I can't argue with much of that, mate. That was absolutely brilliant. Um, collaboration, working together, absolutely wonderful. I'm, I've got somebody else who's just dialed in, Richard. I don't need, could you want to sort of stay on the line? And we may come back to you, but I'm, I may have to juggle some yes, because last week when we had Ed Finch on the, sister, on the system here, we had him playing ukulele with Rachel Snape, but they couldn't actually hear each other because they both Skyped in, but they were separate Skype calls. And I'm really pleased because over here I've got, some, I've got a little mixing desk and I've got all sorts of stuff that lets that happen, but I can only do two at a time because I didn't buy the third one in case it didn't work. So I didn't really want to spend an extra £17. It's quite pathetic, isn't it? So I've only got two calls that can actually speak to each other. So stay on the line now. I'll tell you what I'm going to do, Rich. I'm going to, I'm going to try and jiggly pokely. So I'm going to make you on the screen just a little bit smaller. 
Okay, let's make you a little bit smaller like that. And let's pop you over there. How does, how does that feel? You're right down there. I'm going to put you down there for a moment. No, I'll leave you up there. So you're up there. So that's you, that's you put out there. You can't do this on Skype. You tell your mates at Microsoft that they can't do stuff like this on Teams. This is what conferencing's about. Can you imagine how cool that LGFL conference is going to be? Going to be absolutely off the scale. So now you see, I can just move you down here a little bit. And I can put you, you are Mr. Collaboration. So there you are. That's your first time ever, right? Slap bang in the middle of a PowerPoint slide. This is, we are cooking on gas here. And, and this is quite typical, actually, of the sort of things I get up to because I do talks all over the country. Here I am at Copenhagen Primary School in King's Cross. Katie Potts introduced me there. That's an LGFL school. And we talked about a very, very, very inspiring man there. You don't want, want you behind. There we go. Put you over there. There you go. You're, you're, a bit, you're moving all over the place today, Richard. That's all good. Now Rogers is another man very much like you, uh, Richard, who is passionate about creativity and passionate about collaboration. And hang on, I've got, um, so I've got a call coming in here at the moment. Hold on a sec. Just hang, oh, hang on, blind me. Yeah, oh, sorry, Richard, I've got to bounce you. Hold on, just you st don't, don't go away, Richard. I've got to get you off my screen. I've only got Nar Rogers on the line. Mr. Rogers, lovely you could join us. Wow, this is incredible. I just can't quite believe this. Niall Rogers on a video call. You can't quite obviously see this, but you can see it on the screen. Mr. Rogers, we're called Steam Co. And a lot of people think the Co stands for collaborate, uh, stands for company as in steam company making lots of money. We're not, we're a non-profit community enterprise that is about art, it's about connecting kids with their art and communities with their school. And the co in steam co actually stands for collaboration. I don't know if that's a word you've heard. Mr. Um, Richard Gerber was just talking about collaboration. What does collaboration mean to you? For me, collaboration is everything. I believe that even when I'm composing, uh, I basically write four ensembles and I can't really perform it. I can write it. I say all the time, you know, Beethoven can write the Fifth Symphony, but he can't play it. You need a symphony orchestra to play it. Um, yes, I can play the motifs, I can compose the different motifs, but in order to make them sound the way they're supposed to sound, you need a group of people to perform those, um, those, those ideas. And that's how I write. I write for people. So I collaborate just um, when I'm doing it compositionally. I collaborate when I'm working with others that are throwing their ideas back and forth to me. Um, so my whole life is a collaboration. Wow. Well, thank you so much. For that. I'm not going to keep you on the line because I know it's an expensive call from New York. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Niall Rogers. How, how cool is that? Unbelievable. For me, collaboration is everything. When he writes a song, he doesn't write it for himself. He writes it for the whole orchestra, the whole band. And if you've ever seen Nile Rogers play, you'll know what I mean by that. And thanks so much to, um, to Nile Rogers' collaborator there, uh, Merck Mercuriades, who made that call happen. I just can't believe we managed to get that together in, in the current climate. Incredible. Nile Rogers actually has he's got a real soft spot for Liverpool. He's done work for us in Liverpool. He's played with the guys up there at LIPA, the Liverpool Institute of Performing Arts. And... He's actually the creative director of a place very near where we're based in London. In, in, we're in Kilburn. He's in uh, Swiss Cottage. Uh, he's the music director, creative director of Abbey Road Studios, which you might know as being the place that the Beatles did their stuff. So Nile Rogers there, absolutely fantastic. Now, as I say, art is what this is all about. Today's about the art of Fun Day Friday, because every Friday at Parkins Primary, a bunch of children who've worked hard, who've studied, who've done their maths, done their spellings, done their times tables, get to sit on the sofas at the front of the room and they are celebrated on Fun Day Friday. Today's the art of Fun Day Friday because we say that art is what we call it when what we do connects us. So your art could be painting, your art could be photography, your art could be dancing, and as a disco dad, I must admit, you won't keep me off the dance floor if the tunes are right. The art of design, graphic design, Morag Myerskoff there. Now, Morag Myerskoff has just placed some fantastic billboards up there in Leeds. Check it out. Google Morag Myerskoff Leeds and you'll see the amazing art she's done in Leeds. Beautiful graphic design. DJing, I must admit, I don't mind a bit of DJing myself. Your art could be fashion. Your art, as many children are when I say this, could be football. The kids put their hands up. I love football. Well, if you love football, make that your dream to play for your favourite team. But if, like my granddad... 
you break your leg after your trial for Norwich City, you were going to go in the first team for a shilling a week and you break your leg, you need a plan B. So work hard on your maths, your reading, your literacy, your creativity. Get a plan B up your sleeve. So if you don't make the first team, you could be a manager, you could be a groundsman, you could work in the marketing, you could help run the website. There are so many jobs in the world of football that don't involve kicking a ball. And that's a good job because as my sons will tell you, I can't kick a ball for toffee. I'm a bit of a ballet dancer when it comes to football. Your art could be baking or cooking. The Big Bake Off is one of the most fam famous and popular programmes at the moment because people connect with those chefs and those people, whether they're famous or ordinary people, using ingredients, using food to inspire and to connect. Your art could be coding, developing games. This man's job is making money developing computer games. So do you think that he... Hang on, I've got to look the right way. Am I looking the right way now? Do you think he... I'm looking at a blank wall, believe it or not. This is quite hard. Do you think he played games all the time when he was at school? Do you think he watched videos of people playing games? Or do you think he played some games and then got a pen and paper out and wrote some ideas down for some games and went to his mate and said, hey, you're good at coding. You do the coding. I'll do the graphics. So-and-so can do the selling. Somebody else can do the marketing. And that is how computer games companies started. People like Ian Livingston started a, and was chairman of a company called IDOS I used to work with. You did Tomb Raider. I did the launch graphics and work for PlayStation when we launched that in LA for Sony Computer Entertainment Europe. There are lots of jobs in the creative industries and that's what this is all about. Your art could be rockets. You could say my art's rockets, paper rockets like this because these have taken me all over the world. I've been up to a school in Derby with Richard Gerber and we had a fantastic time just making rockets out of two bits of paper and we're going to show you how to do that in our Rocket Kids Club and we've got the launches. We're getting launches from China for a few quid. We are going to absolutely smash this community lockdown. Your art could be rockets like this, Stevenson's rocket, a steam engine invented by a boy who worked in a coal mine at the age of five in Newcastle. He was illiterate because he never went to school when he was 12, 13. They gave him a job pumping, shoveling coal in the steam engine. He saved money to learn to read and write and learned how steam engines work and invented that. Stevenson's rocket and that powered the Industrial Revolution. And that's a young lad from Yorkshire, from, from Northumbria, from Newcastle, Sunderland area, whose creativity, whose determination, whose skills and hard work changed the world. So everybody there on Seacroft Estate, your kids need you. They need your time, they need books and stories, and they need their art. And we're all about helping them find their art. Their art could be robots. And I, I started this journey quite a long time ago, not with some of my favourite robots. That is one of my little favourite little robots, that one there. You've got to love him, haven't you? Little clockwork one. We take that into schools and ask whether he's any good and what he might be good at. We take robots like this into school and in our Rocket Kids Club, we're going to show you how to code this Lego robot to bite your finger because there's a light detector in there. There's a motor here and we can show you how to do that coding. But today, everybody who does an art of loo rolls entry gets the chance to win a little Edison robot like this. And that's a full function robot. I haven't got any room on my desk. I'll put it on top of my steam engine there. And we've got robots like this. This is from a company called CPC and that's a BBC Microbit. A £12 computer. You can buy those for £12. Three or four friends in a family or mates in a street when the, when the virus lifts could buy one of those and learn coding. You can learn to code one of those without even having a micro bit. And we're going to show you how to do that. We did that last week. That plugs in the back of that little robot there. And that is a robot that can buzz around. You have two of these and it detects the tilting. And then you've got a remote control car and you've built it yourself. That robot was 15 quid from a company called CPC. I could go, oh, we've got JD as well. Gosh, I'd show you JD, but Apple have decided my iPad needs to be re-registered. But JD's got some lovely eyes, as I'm sure you can see there. And we're going to show you how to code JD. JD can fly, believe it or not, he can fly. And we are going to give a JD away at the LGFL conference for anybody who wants to win it, a parent, a child, a carer, a teacher, a school leader. We don't care who wins it, but you win it for your school community to share and we're going to teach you how to code JD. He's got eyes, he's got a camera, he can even work out how old you are because he talks to the internet, he connects to artificial intelligence clouds and he's just unbelievable. Talking to robots, this isn't a robot, this is me when I was one with my first ever train set and my dad and my dad showed me how to make a bridge that day. My dad gave me the greatest gift, my dad 
gave me the greatest gift of his time, a story that I'm telling you now, and my art, because I became an engineer through that gift of a train set, a bit like Elton John getting given a piano. He gave me the gift of creativity and showed me how to use my imagination. And Albert Einstein said, imagination can take us absolutely anywhere. This man from Liverpool dared say that creativity is now as important as literacy. That means that creativity is as important as learning to read. It doesn't mean it's less important or more important. It means it's as important. I saw this in Hull City Centre in a picture and it's basically, I'm not going to drag this out, but it's basically opposite a museum about whaling, which is where the jobs of the future are celebrated. And on the right hand side, an art gallery. It looks a bit like a whalebone, as I'm sure you'd agree, to celebrate and remind us of the jobs that used to exist in Hull, but it's actually part of a wind turbine. It's the blade off a wind turbine. And do you know, somebody has the job of crawling all the way along those blades every few months, a woman or a man, checking for cracks. Now, that's not a job I believe that people, humans, your children, my children should have to do. It's what I call a dirty, dangerous and boring job. And the robots are welcome to those jobs. And the robots are coming. They're taking lots of jobs. There's no doubt about it. And what we've got to teach our kids to do is to do the jobs that the robots can't do. Robots haven't got art. They haven't got an imagination. They don't really do creativity. There are people out there that will put a pen on the bottom of one of those and tell you it's art. It's not. It's an algorithm driving a pen around a piece of paper. Art and creativity is in your children's heads. And I saw this at Imperial College. It's a robot designed to grip on the blade of a wind turbine with a camera looking for cracks so that a man or woman can sit in that boat on the sea there safely looking for cracks. And that's what this is all about. And if Chris Dyson was here now, I know that he would absolutely love to see this little video. This is a video I made of a robot, which is actually in pieces in a box down there because I haven't had time to put it back together. But I'm I'd be rather embarrassed if I had to show that. This is a robot that can do a Rubik's Cube in two minutes, 25 seconds. And I love telling the children the story of this because they're all in awe. The teachers, Chris Dyson thinks it's fantastic. He'd be sitting there now, sitting up in bed, getting very, very excited. I know if he was watching this now. And I say to the kids, do you think this robot's clever? Here it is thinking, and there's a computer there. That brick there is the computer. It's about 12, 15 years old. That's why it's a bit slow. And I said, do you think this is clever? And they say, oh, it's amazing. I said, well, hands up if you think it could swim. And no hands go up. Hands up if you think it could put jam on a piece of bread. And no hands go up. And I say, hands up, do you think it could do its times tables as fast as Macaulay or Tyler at Parkins Primary? And no hands go up. Because that robot can only do one thing. What's clever is the man who invented it or the woman who invented it, who used their creativity, who used their skills to create that robot. And here is a robot made by and designed by the same man that can do, uses a smartphone for the brain. So it's a bit more powerful. There you go. It started it. This is real time. 3.25 seconds. That is an amazing person. That man there over here is an incredible person. This chap's name is, uh, I forgot his name, Mr. Gilday. Mr. Gilday. Um, David Gilday. There you are on the screen. David Gilday. And before we go any further, this is my favourite. I don't know if this is going to work. Sometimes it doesn't. This is a Rubik's Cube with a robot inside it. That is clever. That man there with the funky top, who looks like the second most interesting man in, um, in China, he invented that robot. Now, we don't care about that at the moment. We're here in our community lock-in. We're tapping into inspiration. We're tapping into amazing creative people from all over the country. And I'm absolutely delighted to say that I have got on the line an amazing man called David Gilday. Are you with us, David? Good morning. You, hello, you can hear me. Fantastic. I don't know if uh, Richard Gerber's still there. Let's see if we've got Richard Gerber. It looks like he's Richard Gerber may have gone. Is Richard Gerber gone? Doesn't matter. We're not to worry. Richard, thank you so much. We didn't get to say goodbye, but I know where you are. Let's get rid of that. And David, you, I, I'm lost for words. When I was a little boy, Lego was me. I absolutely loved my Lego. Um, I said to my mum the other week, actually, why, why, have I, why do I do this? Why do I do all this mucking around and creative stuff? She said, well, we didn't have a telly when you were a little boy. And th th when we did, it was black and white. You weren't that bothered. And your brother came along and he was quite interested in watching some TV. And there was only half an hour a day. So I played Lego all the time. 
I get the impression that you pay Lego all the time as well. Could you tell us a little bit about what you do, please, sir? I'll leave it with you for a second. Go for it. Okay, thanks, Nick. Well, actually, you've just you've just taken my first few lines because I was about to say the same thing. I think I had my first Lego set when I was about four or five. Um, and yes, televisions were black and white then, and there weren't many programs on, as you said. So um, I was basically building things, my own design, um, from the age of about five with Lego bricks. Um, obviously, to begin with, I had you know a little black taxi and things like that, and built from the instructions. But very quickly, I realised that you know I wanted to to use my own creativity and uh, build my own designs. Um, and Lego to me just seemed a, a perfect, you know, opportunity, a fantastic um, medium in which you could, you know, create um, quite interesting things. And as time progressed, um, gear wheels and things like that were introduced to Lego. Originally, it was just bricks, but then they added gear wheels so I could start making mechanisms and got interested in the mechanical side of things. Um, and then um, computers started to become available. So that's another thing that you, you know, you, just, you said when we were young, um, televisions were <laughs> fa fairly rare and black and white. Um, and telephones um, were, were actually um, just connected to, to wires. Um, and uh, some of your viewers may not be aware, um, if they've been born more recently, that uh, the term dialing, when you dial a number, it's because the original telephones actually had a physical dial that you had to rotate on it rather than buttons. Um, very few people have phones like that these days. Um, anyway, uh, so I, w I was very interested in, you know, taking things apart and looking at them and, and understanding the mechanics. And then computers came came along. Um, I, I was very lucky that when I was uh, in secondary school, um, the, the school um, acquired, I think it was three small computers between about 1,200 students. Um, and I managed to get access to those. And I'd already done a little bit of programming um, and so on. And uh, at about that time, I started connecting Lego motors to little bits of electronic circuitry that I designed to the back of a computer. So I could start to make um, mechanisms that did different things. Instead of just having a motor that you turned on or off, I could use a computer to control the motor to make it do different things. Um, and in, I think it was 1980, um, I, uh, I came across another thing that, uh, that inspired me. Um, your viewers are probably all quite familiar with this. This is this is a Rubik's cube. Um, they they were available for sale in the UK, I think, uh, early in 1980. So it's about the 40th anniversary of the cube this year. Um, and we we had a couple of sort of friends at school who who were were solving the Rubik's cube and and kind of showing off a bit. Um, and uh, I discovered that uh, they'd all um, learnt how to do it from a book. At the time, um, you know, paper books were were a thing. I guess they still are a bit, but you know, the only way of communicating information like that at the time, there was no internet, was was through printed books. Uh, and very soon after the cube was uh, created, somebody, well, several people published books with instructions on how to solve them. Um, but that's not what interested me. I didn't just want to learn how somebody else did things. Um, because I'd been creative with Lego and started a bit of programming and so on, I wanted to, to try and see if I could solve it myself. So I, I, I borrowed somebody's cube uh, and spent a few days and, and managed to work out my own methods for solving it. Anyway, I'm going to cut a long story short. Uh, a few years later, I say a few, it was actually about 2008, so a lot of years later, I was still playing with Lego. Um, you've already sort of shown one of my robots that, that I developed. Um, but uh, in about 2008, the, the Lego um, company had this robotic set. Were they not both yours? Um, sorry? Both your robots, I think, weren't they? Two of the first uh, yes, two of the yeah. three were yours. Yeah, not just one. Uh, yeah, yeah, get, give yourself yeah, some credit yeah. well, where you, well, mate. Actually, actually, the second one, it was a joint project. So we're, we're going well, back to the collaboration, collaboration <laughs> which you were talking about earlier. Um, so some of the things that I'm going to show you today, I've done on my own. But actually... Um, Cubestormer 3, which was the video you showed, wouldn't have been possible uh, without Mike Dobson, who's a, who's a great friend of mine now. Um, and uh, what, what he and he I do? were referred he? to in he, he and I refer, referred to in an article um, when I think it was actually the, pre the previous version of that robot, Cubestormer 2, was published as the two mad geniuses. So I, I completely understand the mad. Yeah, <laughs> not so sure about the genius in my case, but Mike is an absolutely brilliant mechanical genius. So Mike did all the mechanics on Cubestormer 3, 
um, and I kind of just did the software. So Cubestormer 3 was um, the culmination of, of about 18 months effort from the two of us. And I don't believe I could have done it on my own. Um, and Mike probably couldn't because, you know, he, he didn't have the expertise in the software and I didn't have the, the same kind of skill as, uh, as him in the mechanics. And you, you mentioned a little bit about art earlier as well. So I, I really like the fact that if you look at Cubestormer 3, as well as being, you know, reasonably functional and capable, I think Mike has made it actually look really, really cool. It's it's artistic in the sort of pure sense. It's not just the functional creation, um, particularly if you, if you see it live. It, well, it let's, not, beautiful. let's not fall into the trap of trying to shoehorn the word art back into looking and feeling, being about things that look pretty. Art, if, if you are not an artist, if you have not connected, I saw you in Birmingham at the Big Bang Show four or five years ago. If you are not an artist through the way your creativity, your determination, your problem solving has connected you with thousands, millions of people around the world, I don't know what is. So, so don't, don't worry about that. Yeah, think about it. your art is 98% what you do and 2% making stuff look cool because it does cool things and that's what's important. Okay, thanks. So um, do you want me to just carry on and talk about some of the things that I've created recently? Please do, go for it. So, um, so you showed... Uh, the NXT version. So this this was the, the Lego Robotics kit. As you say, it was about I think it was first launched about 20 years ago. Actually, um, um, they came up with another generation, which they called EV3. Um, as you've already said, this is effectively a small computer. Um, it has sockets in one end that you can plug um, various sensors. So this is a sensor that can detect color, um, and you can plug motors in the other end. So here's a motor, and they very simply just, you know, connect together. Can, um, I, can I tell you my can I tell you my next uh, Lego next robot story qu quickly, sure. David? Do you mind if I butt in there because you've just no, inspired me and reminded me? I've um, down here. I've got a, a Lego um, Jesse. Actually, you kind of got your laptops. Maybe. I've got the I've got the next one kit down there, and basically, um, we, we taught every child to code one of these on a, on a Steam code day eight nine years ago, and. I went into John Lewis and there was Lego everywhere and I said how great it was to see lots of Lego and I told them what we were doing in, in St. Saviour's CV Primary down in, in Paddington in, in the boys school and the guy went around the back and he came back with this great big box and said have you seen one of these and I said yeah he said you need one of these and I said I know they're 300 quid and it's the next 1.0 Lego robots box and I, 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 my wife will kill me if I buy one of those and he gave it to me because somebody bought it and taken it back because there was a part missing Maybe that was the case. Maybe they just found it a bit hard. I don't know, because it does take a lot of parental time and determination to get some of these complicated toys working. And he gave it to me and I just lost it. I really I was just blown away. That random act of kindness and and the way that Elton John's film inspired us with our stuff and took us to Parkinson's Primary. I, I just love these connections. Sorry to butt in on you, David. But it's these little connections, and I'm sure you've got a thousand of those that you could reference to people you've met on your journey. But go back. Where were you? EV3, I think, wasn't it? So sorry. Yeah. Actually, no, no, don't worry. Before I go on to EV3, can I just say the way you and I connected has been one of those examples, actually. Um, I don't know whether your viewers know, but you only got in touch with me yesterday afternoon about this. Um, <laughs> I'm quite, quite well I know planned you haven't me. had very much sleep. <laughs> I'm, I'm lucky enough that I only had to do my own bit, but um, it's it's been a, a, an absolutely awesome time. Even if this is, isn't actually going out live now, I, I think it's it's been absolutely well, incredible. Well, it is, I'm afraid, so be careful what you say. <laughs> Any, anyway, what, what I was, what was going to say was... Um, uh, Lego had done the, the EV3. It has a more powerful processor and more memory, so it's a little bit faster. Um, they've recently brought out a, a new one, back in January, I think it was, that they call Spike Prime, um, which is a little bit more compact and so on. Um, and you've already shown the, the robot that I call Mind Cuba. So it's called Mind Cuba because it's made out of mind storms and it solves cubes. Uh, and that's become a very popular robot. You know, I've published instructions on the internet, so lots of people have built it, obviously, including you. Um, and be, as, as the sort of processor performance increases, um, it's possible to have better solving algorithms implemented. So this takes me back a little bit to the story that I started with, which was that, you know, I, I worked out how to solve the... I'm going to so. do the um, buzz, jargon buzzword stop. So what's an algorithm, David? That's, a, that's oh. about four or five syllable word that was. You've got all sorts okay. of people so listening. Tell me what an so algorithm it's, is in a sentence. It's a, good, it's a good question, actually, because there are two very distinct meanings, one relating to programming and one relating to solving Rubik cubes. And I'll, I'll try and try and expand on this. So I'm going to talk about the programming word first. So an algorithm is effectively a method which you can write down as a sequence of instructions. So, you know, if you were going to make a cup of tea, 
Um, you could write it down as I have to get the cup out, I have to get the kettle out, I have to put water in the kettle, and then I switch the kettle on, wait for it to boil, and so on. You can you can give a sequence of instructions, and and you talk about that as being a a program or a piece of software or an algorithm. Okay, so an algorithm when it, in my robots is um, a method that it can use to calculate um, how to recognize the colors on a Rubik's cube, for example, from the information that comes in from the color sensor how to uh, decide how to manipulate the cube in order to solve it. So a sort of algorithm just to work out the solution uh, and then how to actually control the motor. So all of those are, if you like, software algorithms, program parts of a program. Um, but yeah, the, the, and this can get very confusing when I talk to speed cubers. So speed cubers are these amazing human beings that can solve the Rubik cube. Um, some of them almost as fast as the cube stormer video that you just showed. So I think the current world record for a human being is officially now 3.47 seconds, which is absolutely phenomenal. Um, anyway, when speed cubers, people who solve Rubik cubes talk about algorithms, they specifically mean a sequence of moves that they have memorized, which will p manipulate part of the cube. So they talk about memorizing a number of algorithms the best people in the world, typically maybe 120 of these algorithms. Um, I tend to think of those more like sequences of moves, but I guess in a way they are, it is the same thing. It's, if you like, they've memorized a set of um, instructions saying which faces they need to turn in which order. So it's, 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 it's kind of similar, um, but there can often be a confusion because um, when speed cubers ask me the question, they say, how many algorithms are there in your Rubik cube solver? And they're talking about how many sequences of moves um, rather than, you know, how, how many bits of software are there. So there's effectively just one algorithm that I use in my program, but it, it, it needs several hundred million sequences of moves to be able to solve the cube very efficiently. Anyway, um, wow. enough of this talk. I'm sure your viewers would like to actually see something. Yeah, what have you got? What have you got? Um, well, Let's go full uh, you've screen. already shown the, the NXT version of Mindcube, which, as you say, takes about two minutes or so to solve. I'm just going to show you the next generation, which is based on EV3, which I, I think I created in about 2013. So the EV3 is about seven years old now. Dave, I'm just um, going to stop you there very, very quickly. I'll tell you why, because my son's just gone out and my oldest one's coming in. I just want to show video with my oldest one in, but he'll kill me if I show it while he's in the room. Is that all right? <laughs> just, this is something you're going to like this. this. I just want to raise, show you what you're up against. Um, so let's go back to that one and get rid of that and do this. It's Sam here and I just want to show uh, what I won at school first prize and it's a Lego thing. It's, uh, it's called Sam's Cracking Invention. And you get this uh, piece of tin foil and it uh, gets crinkled and dark and then uh, it gets flattened up again and then it keeps on going up on and on. So, thanks for listening. Bye! None of your fancy new Lego stuff. That's my old cogwheels from when I was a kid, and then I bought a load on eBay. I, I was just about to say, I am feeling so nostalgic right now. Um, I recognise those those gear wheels. I, I, I built things not not as impressive as that, actually, when I was... Um, no, no, kid, I, well, we didn't have I that many bits, did we? like that with, um, with, with Lego gears when, when they were first available. We, yeah. didn't, have that, we didn't have that many uh, cogwheels. Do, I don't know if you remember the Lego box. I, sh I had it on the, with a the guy from Lego, David Palash, last week. And there was one box which had two yellows, three Blue. blues, and four reds, yeah. and two of the four of the little metal things that went in the motors. And I think I had, I think I had two of those sets. Oh, you, you, you always won, isn't there? Yeah, I bet you had a Lego. I bet you had a Meccano set ten. Anyway, we digress. We digress. But I just had to share that with you because, as I say, he's seventeen now, and he, and he killed me if I showed you that. He might, he might have just blown me out. So let me go back to you. Go, where were you, David? Carry on as if nothing happened. Can I just really ask how much more time we got? Because uh, as long as you, something else I want as long to as you want. I, we've got all day. I mean, I mean, it, I'm loving okay. this. If it's just me and you, I don't know how many people are watching. So I need, I, my son's gone okay. out. Just as okay, long as you like, go so, for it. So just before but, I show but you hang on, let's be quite clear. We're getting you back, okay? We're getting you back sometime. We're getting <laughs> okay. you back. So just, just pace yourself. <laughs> okay, okay. So you're all familiar with the regular Rubik cube, three by three cube. Um, the idea, obviously, is to turn the faces so that the cube becomes one color on each side. Um, but maybe not everybody knows that you can get Rubik cubes in different sizes. So the standard one is three by three pieces. This one is obviously just two by two. 
So this is probably, in most people's minds, simpler. And certainly it takes fewer moves to solve. But we can also go the other way. Yeah, this one is four by four by four. Five by five by five. And so on. Six. And you can go beyond six. Okay. So I have a bit of a question for the readers. When when you and I, I, I to, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hang on. is that a cuddly toy or is that a Rubik's cube? This this is a Rubik's cube. And that's hard plastic. It exactly looks almost the, cuddly. Oops, oh dear. That one's it. just uh, popped a piece. Oh, Let me yeah. just pop it back in. Incredible. Um, but it, it turns just like, you know, the smaller Rubik cubes. And the idea is exactly the same. That you've got to try and get all of one side, one color for all six sides. Wow. How long would that um, take you to solve from that state um, manually now? An eight by eight, probably about mm, 15 minutes, something wow. like that. Wow. <laughs> and what's the world record for one of those then? I... I I think they only have world records up to seven by seven actually because they, they, <laughs> they take too long and don't ask me what the seven by seven is um but um, I, I have another friend um joey gooley who he's he's a speed cuber i think he's about eighth in the in the uk at the moment he can solve the three by three cube in about 10 seconds or something wow. he and i occasionally meet up at lunch times and we race each other um i have a nine <laughs> sorry I, ha I have an eight by eight cube this one. Oh my goodness and he has a nine by nine cube so it's only it only feels a little bit bigger, you know. Oh, hang on, that's eight, is it, or ten? That's eight. eight. Oh, so I take it all back. They're easy. Yeah, you're right. Sorry, so I was I thought it was a tenner. Sorry. Uh, well, well, actually, um, sorry, there was another. I'll, I'll I'll find it in a minute. I had another one out to to show you. Oh, yes, it's here. Sorry. Um, so just quickly though. Um, so he and I used to race each other. Him doing the nine by nine, me doing the eight by eight. So I I believe that the nine by nine probably takes about maybe double the number of moves perhaps not quite on average so joey's doing a cube which takes about twice as many moves and he would always beat me um yeah he would take about 14 minutes to do the nine by nine whereas i was taking more like 20 minutes to do the eight by eight wow. um so so yes human beings are, are amazing um but just to show you you know nine by nine is nothing you know there's a 12 by 12 Okay, it looks slightly different because you can't see the black in between the pieces. Well, if Chris Dyson but, was here now, he would say wowzers. I mean, that that is mind-boggling. I, I can't even imagine how that works inside. I mean, I struggle to get my head around a three by three. Is that is that still a big spherical bit of plastic with lots of bits hanging off it? I mean, mechanics no, the, of that. Well, well the, the, way, the way a three by three works is that the middle piece um, is kind of connected to a pivot. And then all the other pieces have hooks that sort of hook underneath it. So it's actually the same on this, that although this is an even number, there is effectively a piece in the middle. And then the four pieces, are, um, let, let's, let's try and move on. Um, just very quickly, um, as well as cubes, um, people uh, make various different shapes. So this one is uh, a dodecahedron in shape, I think is the mathematical name. Um, it's got five sides along each, the edge of each face instead of four. So rather than having squares, they're pentagons. Um, but this one moves in exactly the same kind of way that a regular Rubik cube does. The faces turn. And the idea is the same, that you have to end up with the same color on each of the 12 faces. Um, and you get different shapes. Uh, so, for example, instead of being a cube, this one is two by three by three. <laughs> That's bad. Okay? So you can turn the top face by 90 degrees. But the side faces, you have to turn 90 degrees. Obviously, it then kind of jams. So you can only do 180 degree turns, half turns on the, the, the edge of faces. But it's the same idea. Each face has to be one color in the end. And uh, a few more slightly interesting ones. So this one is a cube overall. But as you can see, it's got thin layers. And those layers, once they're lined up, will turn. Can you see they turn independently of each other? Wow. Incredible. Yeah. But it still also turns like a regular three by three cube as well. So there are kind of two stages to solving this. You've got to start by getting all of the layers in the same orientation. Because you can see at the moment that I can't split these two pieces because this one isn't split there. So that the top thin layer won't rotate. You have to rotate the top thick layer in one go. So you get you get more challenges. And then there are ones which when they're solved are a nice regular shape but you see this one is kind of cut diagonally instead of 
orthogonally across the face. So when you start mixing this one up, it's uh, no longer a cube. Wow. So this one completely wow. changes its shape. Wow. As, as, as you can probably guess, I, I'm a bit of a sort of Rubik cube fanatic. Here's an example of another one, which again is a cube when it's solved. And this one turns in a slightly odd way. Um, wow. And because of the different di different sized pieces, it completely, again, changes shape. So it's no longer a cube once you start mixing it up. So some of these are, are quite a challenge. Um, this is one that they actually do in human speed cubing competitions. It's called a square one. Uh, and if I recall correctly, the world record for solving this is probably, you know, five or six seconds, I think. I may be wrong there. You'll have to look it up. But it's, again, you know, humans are absolutely amazing at solving puzzles like this. Anyway, let, let's, let's get back to, to the robots. Um, so I was talking about my MindCuber. So I, I, ha I have a second generation of MindCuber, um, which uses the more advanced processing in the EB3. Uh, and as a result of that, it can calculate a shorter solution, one which has fewer moves. So when most people solve the Rubik's Cube, people like you and I probably would take um, of the order of between sort of 80 to 100 turns to solve the cube. The best speed cubers in the world probably take more like 40 to 45 or 50 moves, something like that. The the robot that you showed earlier, the NXT Mind Cuber, probably also takes about 40 moves. Um, but the one I'm about to show you, if uh, if my te tech allows me to switch cameras, um, can solve it in uh, usually about 25 or 26 moves because it's got a more powerful processor and, and so on on the EV3 brick. We're actually going to show um, it, it working now. It can calculate a better solution. So forgive me if this doesn't work. There'll be about a second pause, I think, while I switch cameras. Um, but I should have a, a camera pointed at um, a couple of my robots. Here we go. Fantastic. And hopefully the audio will still be here. How about that? That's better. That's the one. Okay. Don't know what happened, but yeah, I'm back. Okay. Right. This is live. Do um, we look like we care? <laughs> go for it. Uh, in, no indeed, epic fails indeed, here. Indeed. Um, so, th so this one is very similar to the robot you've seen before. But because it can calculate a short solution, um, it should be able to solve it a little bit faster than the other one. So what you noticed when I first put the cube in was that it just started automatically on its own. I didn't need to press any buttons. That's because this here is an infrared sensor. It's a bit like the sort of security sensor that you might have in a building to detect people walking around. It basically sends out some infrared um, light that we can't see. And when it sees it reflected back from the cube, it can detect that, um, pass the information to the, the software, um, which then decides to start scanning the cube. And that's what it was doing then. You notice this sensor here, which is a color sensor, was being moved over every piece on the cube. And for each piece, it was able to get back some readings from the color sensor, which, which told it what color the piece was. Once it scanned all of the pieces, um, the software then runs an algorithm, as I said, to work out um, a good sequence of moves that will solve the cube. And once it's done that, what it's doing now is it uses that sequence of moves um, to decide which motors to control in which order to tilt the cube, to turn it over, and to turn each face at a time. So just quickly, you can see that this arm here can tilt the cube. The turntable can either rotate the whole cube or it can turn the bottom face. Wow. So the algorithm on, in the software has to keep turning the cube over to make the face that needs to turn next be on the bottom. Okay, and as you can see, it, it's getting quite close already. Uh, there we go. Um, that probably was about 90 seconds, including the scanning time. Oh, the must, must do. Must try harder, David. Sorry, it's just not good <laughs> enough. <laughs> well, well you, you've already seen Cube Stormer 3. Un unfortunately, Cube Stormer 3 is, is not with me at the moment because it's with one, uh, it? yeah. my friend Mike. But what I do have um, alongside it, um, this, is, this is another robot that I created. Actually, I did this one on my own um, without, uh, without Mike. Although um, he and I may be working on a faster version of this in the future, if uh, if we can. Um, this one, I don't know whether you can see very clearly in the uh, the camera shot, but there's a smartphone here, um, and like Cube Storm of Three, oh, see, yeah, instead yeah. of using a sort of color scan sensor to scan individual colors on the cube, it uses the camera on the smartphone to take a picture of the whole side, the whole of the top. So when I put the cube in, you can see the camera's pointing down at the top of the cube. So it can take a picture of the top of the cube. And then when it wants to scan the whole cube, this one I have to press a button to start, which is why it hasn't started yet. Um, this one, it tilts the cube over so that each of the six sides is pointing upwards and takes a, a photograph of each side. Then it very quickly on the smartphone um, calculates um, 
a very efficient solution for solving the, the 4x4 cube. And in fact, it does the same kind of thing as this. It then uses um, the information about which moves to make to tell um, the, the programs that are running on each of these EV3s. By the way, this has eight of them. Um, the reason it needs so many is... Well, not eight, eight, eight computer brains, basically eight Lego computer, computer brains. brains. Wow. That's right. Although, although they're not actually doing um, the, the solving of the cube itself, the solving of the puzzle, they're just controlling the motors. But yeah, but um, hang on. So, but the thing is that so these are Lego kits. They're two or three hundred pounds each. So you've got about a thousand pounds worth of Lego motors there and robots, uh, haven't you? It's, it's nearly double that actually. Wow! <laughs> so this is not, eight, not one eight, to try eight, at home. Eight, 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 <laughs> gosh. Gosh. But yes, it, so this is not cheap. Um, so, so just going back briefly, actually, the the reason that I designed this one, Minecuber, um, with just one EV3 and so on, this is specifically designed to only need the pieces from one Lego set. Um, so I've actually published the instructions for this on the internet. So anybody who wants to, as, as you've already done, can build it themselves. This one, uh, I'm not proposing to share, mainly because there would be very few people, I think, who, who would build it because of the cost and so on. Well, one thing anyway, I would say, David, as well, is that the Lego Mindstorms, whatever it is, 2.01 that I've got in bits down here, that was £350 10, 12 years ago when it came out. And it's important to note, this was before smartphones were invented as well. So these, these are really old fashioned, slow computers. But you can actually buy those on eBay now for about 50 or £60. So people don't, and Lego may or may not like me for saying this, but I know that they're environmentally responsible and they want everybody to do this. Go on eBay and look for the, the Mindstorms. Is it the NX 1.0 or 2.0, David, they want, or either? It, it, it needs the colour sense, the 2.0 NXT. 2.0, so NXT yeah. 2.0 is on eBay. You can get them for 50, 60 quid. Maybe get your school to buy one. Maybe raise some money by doing a little project or something. A bunch of kids getting together. And then you can download the instructions on how to build these robots. And then you can actually pr download the program and you can even change the program yourself so it does different things. So this is gen so generous of David to have done this and now share it for all of you to build yourselves. It's just incredible. And I built this with my sons. It's really very straightforward. And if you do have any problems, I shouldn't say this maybe, but David's very generous and, and other people help each other on his Facebook page as well. And we'll be getting all this up on our Rocket Kids Club as well when we get that going next week. Sorry, David, I'll let you crack on. No, that, that, that'd be great. Thanks for sharing, Nick. Um, so, so going back to this one. So the reason that we need so many of these EV3s is not because of the computing power, um, but because each EV3, there's a limit to how many motors it can drive. You can only connect four motors to it. And in order to make this um, as fast as it is, I think there are something like 28 motors in it. I can't remember exactly. Um, but you can see there are four motors here for just this one arm, and there are four arms, so that's, that's obviously 16. And there are quite a few inside to, to turn the turntable and so on. Anyway, you're probably all um, bored by me talking now and want to see it. Um, as I said, this is a David, four you could talk all day. You're, you're, just a, you're in such an inspiration. Don't worry about that. Okay, okay. Let's carry on. Um, the, the, the human record for solving a 4x4 four four cube, I think, is around 18, 19 seconds or something at the moment. Um, but this is, this is the best I've done so far. So here we go. Three, two, one. That is just nuts. It's like a spider, isn't it? Looks like a bunch of tarantulas have got hold of a... Look at that. And that's a 4x4 four four as well. Wow. That's a 4x4. Four four. So the time on the smartphone says 20.87 seconds. And it solved the 4x4 four four cube. So that is remarkable. For those, of you, for those of you who might be asking, you know, how much more difficult is it to solve a 4x4 a four four cube? Well, in terms of the algorithm, I... I don't personally think it's really much more difficult. Um, it's like uh, solving a jigsaw puzzle. If you can solve a 30-piece jigsaw puzzle, you could probably solve a 300-piece or a 3,000-piece jigsaw puzzle using the same method. It just takes a lot longer. And the way I think about solving Rubik cubes is kind of the same. So for me, the 4x4 cube isn't really any more difficult. You just have to do a lot more moves to solve it. OK, um, but the key thing is that most again, most human algorithms take about 120 turns to solve the four by four cube, something like that. The, sorry, this is the, the, the speed cubers. Um, you and I would probably take more like 200 to 250 moves. Um, but because um, I've implemented um, a fairly efficient algorithm, this usually can solve this cube in only about 50 moves, far fewer than humans can solve it in. So that's where, if you like, the intelligence in this robot 
uh, and most of its speed comes from. So it can only manipulate the cube at about two moves a second, um, but it only has to apply about 50 moves. So yeah, 20 to 25 seconds, something like that. That's just brilliant. I've um, I've had a bit of a rummage and I've a bit of bad news. This is this is my mind storm. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> I, um, I, when I travel around the country, I, bump, I go over speed bumps and every time I do it, it falls apart. And I have to say that I don't, um, so it's all sort of falling apart and the, the, the bricks dropped off there. So that's not a very good look, is it really? So, oh, um, oh. It, it just needs a little bit of love. A little bit of love. Now, I, I'm passionate. I, when I go to Legoland, I haven't been for a while because the boys don't sort of aren't really into that anymore. But I, I really hate, there's something for me that's wrong about gluing Lego. Do you know what I mean? Oh, it's just wrong, um, isn't it? I probably shouldn't say this, but I think it's sacrilege to even consider gluing Lego. So none of yours are glued together, is that none right? Of, none, of, none of mine are glued together at all, no. Even the Cube Storm 3 that you showed earlier, which is doing nearly, what, nearly 10 moves per second turning the cube, is not glued. Well, you know, I've we, got, a, I've we, got we something. I'm going to tell of, you something, being mate. Purists, when it comes to that, I'm going to tell you something. I've worked out a few bits in this that I'm going to blooming well glue together because it's always the same bits that come undone. <laughs> but, but the great thing with Lego is you can just put it back together. Yeah, okay, mate. Well, when, when you're doing a two-week tour of Britain and you're going to ten schools and you're seeing five thousand children and you're jumping out the car and you've had ten minutes between one school, you haven't had any lunch and you're opening your box and you're going live and you've got three hundred kids looking at your face, your Rubik's cube robot has got to work. Let's um, talk about this later. About <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> Carry on. Anyway, I, I've, I've got one more thing to share with you if we have time. I'm, I'm, I'm really sorry, David. I think we've just run out of time. I don't think we can show a robot that you've made for the world's first time. I don't think we've got even, time to show that. Ten on. seconds. I don't think. So you're telling me you've made a Rubik's Cube robot that nobody in the world has ever seen that it's under that sheet. It hasn't yet been published. And, and yes. you're, t you're telling me that you think we should just find another two or three minutes to show a Rubik's Cube robot that nobody has seen in the world. Yeah? Is that what you're asking? I'm, I can't show you it working, but it'll take, only take 10 seconds just to read oh, the sheet Oh, go off. on then. What should we say, boys and girls? I think so. This is just okay. off the scale. This is a world exclusive. So Reveal the detail. I uh, mentioned we've got NXT and EV3 versions of Minecuber. This is the, um, the new one that I've been developing. I'm still working on it based on the new Spike Prime, which is called Prime Cuber. Whoa, okay. check that out. So, so there you go. This one hopefully will be solving Rubik cubes and I'll be sharing instructions for this fairly soon on uh, on my Mindkeeper Facebook page and so on. So let's be but quite this clear, hasn't this been uses this uses yet by anybody. So this is using the latest Lego Mindstormsy type thing which is called Spike, I believe, is it? Spike Spike Prime it's called, yes. Spike Prime. We haven't got one of those. Maybe Lego will send us one because we haven't got any money to buy any Lego like this, but that looks just incredible. And and so it's similar functionality the, it looks yes. a bit different. The camera looks a bit different. What's going on there? What, how does that move? So, 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 so the, the this is a, a new shape of colour sensor and so on. Um, but they've included this rack and pinion as part of the the standard set. I don't know whether you can see, but oh, there are I teeth see. on this and gear yeah. wheel. So the motor can make the um, this just slide sideways, whereas the older one had to have the sort of parallelogram mechanism. This one, because it's got the the rack in the standard set, it can just slide the camera backwards and forwards. But the the arm for tilting the cube moves effectively in the same way um, as the previous one and this at the back is it's actually an ultrasonic sensor rather than an infrared sensor but it, it serves the same function for detecting things at a distance but the old one was at ultrasonic as well wasn't it on the next 2.0 the, the, the nxt was and in fact there are two versions of the mindstorms ev3 as well there's a sort of retail version and an education set and the education set has a, an ultrasonic sensor as well so people may be more familiar with the ultrasonic than the infrared Fantastic. So that is a state of the art brand new Lego set. It's only been out a few months and you've already made a robot that uses all the parts that come in that set. That's the point, isn't it, as well? No extra bits that you've had to buy no, in specially. No, no, no extra parts, indeed. In fact, there are a few left over, but not very many. <laughs> wow. It was quite a challenge to do it with just one set. I bet it was. And I must admit, I'm actually, I got my, my, if my wife was here now, she'd have her eye on your Urco sofa in the background there as well. That's a lovely old safe. <laughs> if, if, ever, if ever you're swapping that for Lego, you know where to come. Fantastic. Thank you, David. Put your camera back on. That is just, I, 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 there are children all over the country, all over the world. They're going to watch this in the next days, weeks, months. We're going to put this up on our YouTube channel. Can't thank you enough for your generosity today. Absolutely, absolutely fantastic. I've actually just had a rummage around while you were there. And look what I found. Does that take you back? You've got to get the time delay on the YouTube. I know you've got a six second delay. How cool is that? 
There you go. That is the correct response. You've still got the box. My wow. mum had this in the loft. And if she's watching now, I love you, mum and dad. Oh. Keep safe. Keep well. And there is the there are those cogwheels. And that is literally the instructions. You and I and millions and millions of others were that little boy on the front or that little girl. I think it's a girl on the front there, actually, which is great. The green's playing up. So there you go. That is a Lego cogwheel set. Oh, it's all fell out, not to worry. And that's Absolutely. my original set. And like every sharp elbowed dad with, with an internet enablement and not me really up to buying stuff, I had a bit of a blitz on, on eBay. Because these, these are the real cogs. You, you, you can imagine this now. I know you know how these feel meshing together, don't you? Have you got any of these out of interest, the old school stuff? I, I have, yes. I've yeah, still yeah. got all my original Lego. Because that, that's the new ones. But you can, you can buy bags and bags of these cogwheels. So just imagine, kids, getting one of those, getting a few of these old cogwheels off eBay, and one of these little Edison robots, which has got not just one, but two motors on it that you can control. If you've done scratch coding, you can control this with a programming language just like Scratch and build some really cool things. I think we'll have to get a few of these to David to see what he can do with that. And we are gonna give one of these Edison robots, we've got about 10 in our online store. Well, we haven't yet, we're gonna be putting those up this afternoon. So if anybody wants to buy one of those, they're 45 quid, but we are gonna give this one. And to prove it, I'm gonna write on it, here and now, I'm gonna write on the side here, I'm gonna write prize. This has come from Australia where they designed them as they're probably made in China now that says prize on it that could have your name on it if you want to win this what you've got to do is some loo roll art some art of loo rolls post your pictures and today maybe at five o'clock we'll give you the afternoon we'll judge that competition um, and while I'm at it David have you, seen, you haven't seen what else I've got on my table have you this is my pride and joy I didn't have this when I was a little boy I always dreamed of having one of those when I was a little boy that is a live steam loco and you can actually light a fire inside that using butane gas and that will that will run around a bit of track. So I think one day when we get the Rocket Kids Club going, I'm going to fire this up on YouTube and I think you'll be drooling back. And in fact, here's can I, some... Um, can I pause you there? Yeah, go for it. You're going so, to trouble so me, I are didn't, you? Go I didn't have that, but I had a couple of uh, a steam engine and a steamroller. Oh, the mammoth on ones. Methylated spirits rather than brute butane, but yeah. I, I used to dream of having... So let's be quite clear. I did not have one of these when I was a little boy. I had these when I had a job in advertising and it's going to be the last thing I sell to pay the electricity bills. I'm going to keep this. We call this beauty. And we've got a little track for beauty and we're going to get that fired up on the Rocket Kids Club one day. Actually, I want to show you something quite cool while you're on the line as well, David. I've got, I've got, I'm have got, des i desperate not to out trump you, but just to, just to sort of get some cred here. Um, I've got a really, really cool robot that you may or may not have seen before. Let me have a look. Whoop. So this, this is JD. And JD is a super cool robot that you can code using scratch type programming languages and and get him to do all sorts of cool things so come on jd give everybody a wave at home do you know how to wave don't you always had a bit too hard for you oh he's thinking about that he's having a little bit of the scratch of his head for that one come on jd one more try please please wave to all the boys and girls please wave to everybody at home one more time here we go oh there we go he's giving us all a wave so this is JD. JD is a robot that can connect to the cloud for artificial intelligence. They're 500 pounds. They're designed by a company in Canada and they gave us this one at the Bet Show this year. I could not believe my luck. He just gave it me. So I love what you're doing. Take this. And here he is live on the internet. If you'd like to win one of these, they've given us another one. Your school community can win this and we're going to be judging and giving this away. We're going to work out what the competition is, but any parent and child working together, any school can win this for their community. So that's JD. What do you think of that then, Richard? Uh, David, do you think that do you like that one? It's absolutely fantastic. Yeah. If I had something like that when I was younger, <laughs> I might have stayed with that rather than going with Lego. But well, if you did something like that when you were a child, you might have had a proper job. <laughs> So let's be quite clear, your job is working for ARM, which is the company that makes and does, well, designs the chips in most tablets and smartphones. Is that right? That, that's right, yes. I'm, I'm in the CPU design group there. Um, wow. <laughs> and and it's, it's one of the reasons, I think we, we said earlier, why they quite like demonstrating my, my robots, because but yeah, I think you said earlier that um, the NXT, the EV3, and now Spike Prime all actually have ARM process in, processes in as well. So this is all enabled by ARM technology. 
Absolutely fantastic. I can't thank you enough for your time today, David. As I say, we are setting up a thing called the uh, the Rocket Kids Club, hashtag Rocket Kids Club, which is going to be like a Facebook online social community for kids and creative carers. So that's basically maybe their mum, their dad, their auntie, their uncle, their granddad, maybe somebody in the street they know and trust who's very friendly and generous. It could be somebody on the internet inspiring. We want to connect all those families and communities in places like Seacroft and in Newcastle, down in Redruth in Cornwall, up in Ironbridge in Telford, all those people in estates, in posh houses, tower blocks, whatever, living in caravans with their travels, whatever. We want to connect them with the internet to people like David here. David, when we get the Rocket Kids Club up and running, would you come back and maybe do a little sort of couple of little workshops for us? I would love to. I'd love to be involved. Anything to try and inspire the, you know, the next generation to do even more than we've already done. It, you know, it would be great. Fantastic. Well, it's ironic, isn't it? My mum said, I'm who I am, what I am. I do what I do, whether that's good or bad, because we didn't have the telly. So maybe today's the day to turn the telly off, maybe turn YouTube on and go and find some cool art, some what we're calling hashtag art of our times, the art of Lou Rolls. David, I'm going to let you crack on now. Thank you so much. We're going to have a bit of a look around the internet and find some inspiration now. I've got a mum actually in uh, Leeds and her son Rowan, I know are going to try and Skype in and they're going to show us an invention they've done and a, a gadget they've made. So do stay on the light. We'll stay on YouTube and have a look at that, won't you? But thank you so much. If you well, could post a link to your YouTube channel in the comments, that would be great for people as well. Would you do that? I will do that, yes. Bless you. Uh, Big in, round of applause in, from all over the world. I know Chris Dyson, bless him, poorly in bed. Chris Dyson will be so amped. You'd have given him a lease of enthusiasm and boost to get him through his sickness, I'm sure. Thank you so much, David. Okay, you're welcome. Thank you very much for inviting me. I've had a great time. Amazing, thank you. Wow, well, how cool is that? David Gilday there. Um, Lego robot engineer extraordinaire by night and by day, literally working in the team, designing the little black chips that go into smartphones and tablets and computers all over the world. So they design those chips and how they work. David, I believe, works in a team that tests them. And, and that's not a case of sitting there with a test meter. That's working out algorithms, as he said, programs to, to work out the best ways, because these things have to be really efficient. They have to be super fast. Every generation, every time they make a new computer chip, it has to be faster and better than the last one. And it's his job to make sure that they're doing things the quickest possible way. It's just remarkable. And as he said, these jobs rely on those skills that we're talking about today. Collaboration, teams working together, people who do one thing working with somebody else who does something else. I used to work for a company where I did my year in industry. I did an electrical engineering degree at Loughborough University, made a year in industry. And we invented a machine that could measure how high a little silicon track was on a silicon ship and it literally dragged a little metal thing and a magnetic thing recognized it and they could measure a millionth of a meter and i'm sure that was old tech because that was 30 years ago be careful showing my age too much shouldn't i so where are we now let's um let's just flick through this just quickly we are just about hopefully going to go back to parklands to the seacroft to say sadly today without um our dear friend mr dyson who's who's poorly um, and I'm just checking my messages to see if anybody else has come back to me because a few people, um, oh, hello. I've just had a message from Ed Finch. Is he around? Let's have a look. Oh, we might be able to get Ed Finch on. That'd be lovely. So let's see if we can get him to Skype in. Um, we've got, yes, brilliant. Okay, so we've got Leanne Burkett. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run a video I'm going to try and get uh, Leanne uh, logged in here. I don't think she's um, Skyped in yet. Let me just have a quick look on the Skype. Just to remind you the craziness going on here. We have got, is that working, that camera? Let's have a look. That should work. Why can't we see that? Number two. So let's, let's show you the craziness on the table here today. We've got all sorts of stuff. So we've got three computers over here. We've got Skype computer one, Skype computer two, Skype computer three. The audio for those mix on a little mixing desk down here. I've only got two, I need to get a third in. This is uh, my son's laptop, which is connected up for streaming. This one here is running PowerPoint. We've got Beauty the Steam Engine there. And in the middle of it all is this amazing box of tricks here, which is a vision mixer. And all these video things, so they've got camera one and two here. So every time I press a button, what's on the screen changes. So that puts that camera back up. Oh, it's a green screen, wonder what that's all about. That puts that picture up, that puts nothing up because they're black, there's nothing on there. That's laptop one, there's laptop two, there's laptop three. So let's go back to that one. 
and be ready to roll with that. I can put stuff in windows and videos. We've got a camera on the screen up on the top there. That's filming me. And then over there is a video and a clock which shows me everything that's going out. So I can see all the different channels. I can see the picture that's going out live on the internet in the top right. I can see the picture that's coming up next and all those other icons. So you can see hopefully there that we've got the, the three Skype channels in the bottom right hand corner. I've got me in number one and I can press any button I want. I can even pop myself over that like that because I've got the green screen and that, that mixer can take the green out. So this is fantastic. So I could literally be anywhere. Um, I've, I don't know if you saw me. I was on BBC Breakfast the other day or everybody thought I was. But in fact, I was here. Of course I was, because I'm obeying the government's guidelines on travel. I, we had the chance to go to Cornwall, but we decided it wasn't responsible. We decided it wasn't safe. Um, there's a massive issue down there in Cornwall about safety and, and pressure on the health service. And we felt that it was totally responsible, so we stayed here. In fact, I've been to Glastonbury, as I'm sure you've noticed. So there I am suddenly coming from Glastonbury. It's absolutely incredible, isn't it? On, and I've pretended that farmer Michael Evis has let me borrow his, his stage because he didn't need it. Um, so we've got all sorts of craziness and, uh, at our disposal and fingertips here. So let's um, cut back over there. Why isn't that working? OK, let's get that back over there. Here I am back at Parkins Primary. I'm very quickly going to play a video. I'm going to see if I can get um, one of the mums there on the Seacroft estate who's been working with her son to do some incredible stuff. I'm going to play the farm again, the video that inspired us to go out on the streets on Thursday night to clap to make lots of noise, not just for the NHS, who are leading the vanguard in the most brutal situations, almost warlike conditions these people are working in at the moment. But we're clapping for everybody who cares, every one of our key workers, the bin men, the delivery men, people out and about, the policemen, the firemen, who've got a really tough job at the moment, keeping people indoors, keeping them moving, stopping them sitting down, the park keepers. We love you, parkies, really, even though we give you a mouthful. We love you all, but most of all today, this is going out for a bunch of people who are keeping our children safe, keeping them inspired, keeping them educated, keeping them fed. People like the legendary Chris Dyson up there in Parklands. Um, and as a thank you to them, we're absolutely delighted that the farm, uh, Pete Hooton and, and Mr Mullins have allowed us to show this song. I've got to make sure my telly doesn't turn off. There we go. They're allowing us to share this song with you. A song, an anthem for our time, it's an anthem about togetherness, an anthem about community and connection, an anthem from a city that for us has been very special, the birthplace of a number of amazing creative people, the Beatles obviously, Ken Dodd, the uh, Sir Ken Robinson, people like Ken Heaton who's running an amazing school there, Florence Melly, and the amazing schools down there in the Baltic Triangle, the Life Sciences UTC and the Studio School, the North Liverpool Academy, all those incredible schools we've worked with in Toxteth and, and all, over, all over Liverpool. This one's for you. Sing it loud, put your hands in the air, be very proud of the art of your city.
Thank, thanks, and again and together. And today is all about how art connects, the creativity, the technology, the people, celebrating amazing people. We're live today in our wildest dreams from Parklands with this amazing leader who sadly has come down with hot flushes and isn't feeling very well overnight. We're hoping it's the cooking lager. We hope it's nothing more serious. And we don't say that in jest. This is a very serious subject. And people like Chris, and many other brave school leaders like him, teachers, cleaners, kitchen workers, site managers, delivery staff, everybody in that community is working for their children, not just in that school, but for schools across Leeds. I know Phil Mellons, the head of children's services there at Leeds, works very closely with Chris and they've collaborated, they've worked together to provide hot meals for school children, for, for children who need meals all across that city. And it's great to see the leader of Leeds Council acknowledge the work that Chris and, and his colleagues have been doing. Today brought to you by an amazing organisation, LGFL, London Grid for Learning, who are now national. They'll very soon be Leeds Grid for Learning because they're working with, with Parkins Primary to upgrade their internet connectivity so that they can access the technology, the richness, the interactivity, the experiences that we all take for granted in the rest of the country because they just haven't got that connectivity at the moment. And you can be sure that John Jackson and his team are going to be giving them the very best in terms of internet connection. But it's not just about the technology. It's about the content and the resources and the support and the advice and guidance that John and his team give. We're delighted to be working with them on a, a conference which has been moved from the 23rd of April to a date in early May, which is great because it's suddenly part of the hashtag UK Art Takeover. A month of activity and one of those days is going to be with John and Bob and the team, Laura and Adam and all those guys, fantastic team of people. Carol Allen hopefully will get her involved. She's just a wonder she was on the other day. So it's going to be great. LGFL. We're also partnering up with CoFight19, which is an organisation helping communities, parents, teachers come together to get the inspiration to fight the fear of the virus, because it's pretty scary. It's pretty scary for us all. We know that it takes no prisoners. It affects us all. And as Emily Maitlis said the other day, this is affecting disproportionately a lot of those people in lower paid jobs who are much more vulnerable because they're out working, they maybe haven't got the, their jobs because they're manual work and they've lost it, or they're in high rises or in, in small apartments and flats. So it's not just the people in, in Downing Street and we wish uh, the Prime Minister all the best with the recovery because we need our leader back in the hot seat. Uh, we've got Keir Starmer now as, as part of that team working with him. It's great to see all these politicians leaving politics at the door to come together for this country and its people. And I know that Chris Dyson is an advocate of, of that consensus thinking. I'm going to jump to a film now, which I probably shouldn't show. But for me, it just sums up everything that is so special about this man, Chris Dyson, and what he does with his creativity and what he does with his skill. When Chris took that school over um, four or five years ago, it was not in a good place. There were children excluded. There were children who, whose behaviour was not appropriate. It was not good for a school setting. They may have had all sorts of issues, maybe possibly issues and situations at home with broken families or financial pressures. They could have not had enough food. They could have been irritable. They could have been hungry. They could have learning difficulties. And there, were, there was a place in that school with a padded cell that children had to go for days when they were, weren't, weren't behaving. 170 exclusions in a year, 170 instance, instances of children removed from school for a period of time. And there are many ways of thinking about this and some good, some bad, and we're not here to judge, but we are here to celebrate. We are here to celebrate the work of amazing leaders like Chris Dyson, who believe in inclusivity, who believe in everybody having a place in their school and inspiring those children and including them through that inspiration. You know, Parklands is an extraordinary example in terms of the work that the school is doing within the community, um, you know, that the work that Chris Dyson has, had, has done. Well, as I said, I'm Chris Dyson, I'm head teacher at a school up in the most deprived area of Leeds, Parklands. Uh, I inherited the school uh, three years ago that had 150 exclusions, five head teachers in the same year, five different behaviour policies. Exclusions was the easy option. 
um, and it wasn't the best place to actually be. The school was inadequate, um, but the same team that have worked together have seen now we have no exclusions whatsoever in school and we've actually started taking excluded children from other schools to bring them to our environment. I mean, there's been a lot of talk about behaviour, uh, especially this week with the Lose, a bit, Lose the Boobs event. Well, we've got to be respecting everyone's different ways of, of doing things. I mean, for myself, I love Paul Dix and I think this is one of the best books that I personally have ever read. Um, but I think behaviour can be encouraged by inspiration, you know, by getting the children to do exciting, innovative things through the curriculum, through the arts, through collaboration. So the key to the outstanding behaviour we've got here at Parklands is empathy, it's love, it's giving opportunities, it's believing in the children and giving them those opportunities to excel at things and to take a risk, you know. When the sharpest words want to cut me down I'm gonna send a blood, gonna drown a I need to talk over this because we're going to get the copyright people on us if we're not careful. But you know the words. Let's go. One, two, two, one, boom. This is for you, Chris it's Dyson. Good. You believe in the people, you believe get in well. these teachers, you believe in these kids. Absolutely anything is possible. That is one amazing man. That is one amazing school community leader. That is a dear friend, Chris Dyson. And today is for you, Chris. Um, we have got, I'm delighted to say, a very, very special guest on the line at the moment. Um, let's just see if I can get this, uh, just wait for me to press a button. I'm a little bit, uh, fingers and thumbs at the moment. Let me see if that's gonna work. And on the screen there we have, by the look of it, we actually have Leanne and Rowan. Can you hear us, Leanne and Rowan? Yeah, we can. Fantastic. Yeah. Hello, Rowan. How are you, young man? Are you OK? Yeah. So you go to Parkins Primary, do you? Is that right? Yeah. What year are yes, you in? Um, Rowan in year one in Miss Sunderland's class. Miss Sunderland. Big shout, big shout for Miss Sunderland. Do you know, um, do you know um, Miss Hattersley? Um, I don't personally, you know Miss Hatsley, don't you, in school, Rowan? Yeah. She was year six, so she did some great work for us. Yeah. She got all the children yeah. to do some drawings for us in our um, Rocket Kids book. So all the pictures in this book with, do you know, I don't know if you know Macaulay, but all the pictures in there were done by Miss Hattersley's class. You've got Miss Nolan, do you know Miss Nolan? Yes, we do know Miss Nolan. She's an amazing lady. Yeah. Fantastic teacher. What an amazing, you've got Beth there, lovely, lovely Beth. The, the lovely Beth, the lovely Beth. This is for you, lovely Beth. And Chris Dyson. So, so Rowan, what's your favourite subject? What do you like to do most at school? Uh, work. What work though? Which subject? Oh, that's the correct answer. He <laughs> loves science. Anything sciencey. So, what have you been doing? You've been you've been locked in at home, have you, for um, a couple of weeks now? Have you, Rowan? Yeah, um, Rowan was actually in hospital three weeks before the lockdown. Oh no. For two week. Um, so Rowan had the be schools since the end of February. Oh so no. So a long time at home. He's, all, he's better now is he? Yeah he's all better now, all fine and then the lockdown happened so he hasn't seen his teachers or any of his friends since the end of February. So oh dear that's no good. He's got lots of things to keep him busy. I bet you have. So what have, what have you been up to? So you're here because I, I just happened to see something on, on the internet. You put, you put a, something on Twitter, didn't you, uh, Leanne? What, what have you been up to? So Rowan is obsessed with anything to do with wires or motors or anything that he can, oh, a plug or anything like that. So um, the other day he, he wanted to make a crane. So we made a crane out of bits of wood and rope and stuff that we found in the garden and in his dad's shed. Oh, then I was at work yesterday and I come home and they decided to make it an electric crane. So they've hooked it up to, hang on a minute, I'll just turn my camera around. So they have now hooked it up. Oh, you're a pro with the to, camera, you are, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. To his dad's drill. So, Rowan, would you like to tell everybody what you did? I, I, I drilled some parts of wooding and then I'm putting... 
a clip there. We did. We put a clip there to hold his, his pretend electric wire. Yeah. And, and the then wire. we've done a spindle here out of bits of metal that we've found in the shed and connected it to a bar so that when he turns when he turns on the drill, the bucket lifts up with his rocks in and so it can oh, really fast wow. and can do it down again. And you made that together out of bits of wood lying around your garden? Yeah, we've um, stuff that we had laying around and um, bits out of his dad's shed and just basically just trying to find something that's not on the iPad or... Yeah, well, good for you. Computers ...and just out in the fresh air. I mean, it's not like technology is evil, but, you know, there's a lot that you can do. And you could do everything on technology, but you've got to get those what they call fine motor skills going. I mean, I've... Yeah, um, yeah. I've got, you know, these scissors. We go into schools and there are kids who can't use scissors. Kids who can't use yeah. scissors. It's, it's just nuts. And there are lots of things you can do. You know, the, the best thing you can give a child is a cardboard box half the time. Oh, yeah, definitely. Have you done any cardboard modelling at all? Yeah, we've... Uh, Rowan's made his own printer out of a cardboard box that we actually had to buy a new printer the last week. So the printer box that it came in, Rowan decided to make his own printer. Wow. Um, we've just ordered some little extra wires and things and fans so that it can make toilet roll cars and stuff like that. Amazing. I've um there's there's an amazing system. Now this is this is quite a fancy little bag it all comes in. But basically this is a thing called make do. Check this out. So this is this is quite a fancy little uh, cloth bag, but basically it comes with these little um, little rivet things, and what you do is you can screw them together to screw bits of cardboard together. Ah, oh, look at that! That's cool. So, would you like me to send you a few of those? If I send you a, oh, a, a few of those oh. up, and then what you could do is you could make some cardboard stuff. And what we'll do is when we get the Rocket Kids Club going, maybe yeah. you could be one of our expert makers, and you could show us every week what you've made. Would you like that? Oh, would you like that? You'll be an expert maker. Yes. If you fancy oh. that, well, we'll send you one of those. And the other thing we're going to do, I've just decided here and now as well. Do you like, did you see the robots there, Rowan? Did you see the Lego robots? We did, yeah. Did you think it was cool? It was very smart, wasn't it? Very. Have you, um, have you, have you seen me come to your school? Have I been to your school since you've been there? Yeah, um, Rowan was, because he's in year one this year, so he was there when you did the rocket launch. Oh, you saw the rocket launch, did you? That didn't go quite as well as we'd hoped that one, but less said about that, the better. Um, <laughs> I got into castle. We did next castle. Let me have a look. I've got something here I wanted to show you. I don't, I've, I'm more fingers and thumbs here. Do you remember the, the robot that was in these little boxes here? Do you remember those little robots? Have you got any Lego? Have you got any Lego there? Oh, yeah, we've got loads of Lego. Okay, well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to send you... Rowan, I'm going to send you one of these Lego robots. Oh, what For free. Thank you. And what I want you to do, I want you and your mum to watch us on our Rocket Kids Club. And every week, we are going to teach you how to code one of these little Lego robots. And, and you can use this to make a crane. Oh, wow, we can use the the robot to make a crane yep. yeah. and i'm also i'm also going to send you this now this is a bag of lego that lets you build a bulldozer w with this robot a bulldozer whoa have you got a laptop there leanne yes we have good because i can't yeah. give you a laptop so i'm using all my laptops i'll send you this this week oh, i'll send you that this week you are my first official maker family in leeds and I want you to keep me posted. And I also need you to do something with a toilet roll tube today as well, because we need to get the buzz going on that. And yeah. you can help me build some community up there in Leeds. Do you fancy helping me with that? Yeah, yeah, that will be it, won't it? And one more job, one more job, because you're now officially part of the team. What I need you to do is I need you to download the template and draw a heart logo like that. Can you see that? Right. What, everybody in the family who's going to get involved, do one of those, and I'll print you a T-shirt like that, and I'll send it up with the robot, and then you'll have that maybe next Tuesday, Wednesday, for the first ever Rocket Kids Club session next Friday. Is that cool? Oh, yeah, that's amazing, Rowan. What do you say? 
Thank you, He wants so to get much. on and make stuff. And look what I've got, Rowan. You can't have this because I'm going to make myself a crane later on. Ha ha. You're going to make a crane later? Thank you, Alice. Fantastic. I made it to Hagrid. Oh, you did. But that does, that's got no electric on it. That, does that is color. just amazing. We're going to do Lego. We're going to do cardboard. And check this out, Rowan. I have got, this is called Beauty. <laughs> This is Beauty the Steam Train, and I'm going to bring this up to Leeds, and we're going to fire this up at Parkland's Primary when we get out of our lock-in. How about that? Would you like to see this steam train work? Wow. Yeah, I have to get my insurance sorted out for that. I think I'm insured for that. We'll have to check that. I can do <laughs> rockets. So it's just so amazing. We're going to finish now. We're going to, I'm going to connect with an amazing an amazing uh, teacher, a chap called Ed Finch. The day I met Mr. Dyson, I was in the school on a Friday morning. I, he invited me back to his house that Friday night for dinner, because that's the sort of guy he is. And I had dinner with uh, Sally and the family and the kids there, Sammy, and we had a lovely, lovely evening. And there was a man there, a, 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 an amazing teacher who was in Leeds called Ed Finch. And I'm doing a festival with Ed at the end of May. We're doing a three day festival. And Ed is just about to come on now and Ed is going to play the ukulele and we're going to sing a song which is an anthem not only of the teachers that meet at Primary Rocks every year in Salford unfortunately they couldn't do it this year but it's an anthem for school teachers, leaders, families, communities all across the country and I'm sure you're going to know it when you hear it because the children sang it that morning that I came to Parkins Primary and Mr. Mr. Dyson gave me a hug and he showed me a little letter a girl gave him so we're going to play that video now I'm going to get Ed Finch lined up. He's going to play it on his ukulele and we're going to sing out of this amazing morning we've had here together. Thank you so much, both of you. Fantastic. And I'll be in touch. Get your address. DM me your address and we'll get that off to you in the post next week. And we'll see you next Friday. Hashtag oh, Rocket Kids Club. So much. Yeah, we'll see you next week. Bless you. Bye. See you, Rowan. Thanks, Leanne. It's been amazing. I'm sure you've made Mr. Dyson very proud and the whole community Bye. there. Absolutely wonderful. Thank you. Bye. So that is what this is all about. This is about connecting communities. It's about connecting me and whatever I am and whatever I do with families and communities like that all over the country. They're in Parklands, but also in Tyneside, on North Tyneside, we're working with the North Tyneside Learning Trust. We work with school communities in Liverpool. We're working with school communities in, in Cornwall. We were down on the coast in Devon just the other week in Beer and Seaton. Fantastic work going on down there. And we're going to be working with school communities all over the country because in May we are doing the hashtag UK Art Takeover. We're doing a launch event in Parliament and we're travelling across the country. We're doing an event with LGFL and we're going to have the most amazing time. So I'm just going to, I'm going to freeze this. So I've got a button here called freeze. So I can look at this and I can freeze. I'm, let me just think of something I want to, so freeze so that freezes and I can talk which means I can now go to my laptop and I can get Ed Finch lined up gonna get him on there now let's make sure we're um, doing that getting that all sorted and then over here I will find the film that I want to show before we get Ed Finch live on the line so bear with me we're minutes away from ending this if you're um because this is what fun day friday is all about it's the magic of children communities singing having a happy 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 time so let's imagine that we are now in leeds in an amazing school community Let's imagine we're in the dining room there at Parkins Primary having a quick cup of coffee because it's Fun Day Friday. Well, it will never be the same without Chris Dyson. There's no doubt about that. There will never be a Fun Day Friday without three or four hundred children and their parents and all their carers in the back of the room celebrating the achievements of the children over the week. The children in sofas at the front eating pizza, um, possibly drinking some sweet sugary drinks, whatever, because that's what they deserve. Something to aim for, something to aim high for, something to dream about, something to connect them with their passion. We call it their art. And that morning I was in Parkins Primary. Mr. Dyson put a record on. He boomed out the gorillas. He's got a massive sound system there. I think it was the first thing he bought with his newfound budget. And this was what I experienced. So an absolute wowsers of a morning, you know, from day Friday, uh, assembly and then innovation, technology, 
and dreams rocketing up to the to the sky. I must admit, I don't get too cliched about it, but I haven't felt lonely since I met Chris Dyson. What, what a rock that man has been to us all the way through. An absolute hero, an absolute fantastic friend. Um, just can't thank him enough for all the support and all the, uh, all the love and friendship that he's given us. Um, here we are in the community lock-in, uh, pretending we've been at Glastonbury all week, pretending we're at Leeds. We're actually here in, in West London um, and most particularly, most specially, uh, a very, very special man who was there in Leeds that weekend, who was at Chris Dyson's house for dinner because Chris gives his mates beds and if granddad's there, you have to sleep on the sofa, whatever, anything comes, anything goes. Fantastic hospitality. But there was a super guy there I met that night and here he is now. I'm going to cut over to um, this super chap. I'm like, why can't I get, why is that there? Not to worry. Here we go. Super chap, Ed Finch is live and direct on the community hey. lock-in. Yes, Very I can hear you. Here. Can you, you hear audio? Because I can't hear it. You can't hear me. Hear you. You, yeah. You, what What do you want to hear out of interest? Um, I, it's just nice to know that you can hear me. We that's can hear you. I I'm actually. I'm not going to hear your voice, so that's all right. We're good. I've invested you, in technology you know, now. You've been working hard this morning, haven't you? We've had a great time. It's been wonderful. I was heartbroken to see that um, that Chris was poorly, and yeah, we took the call to go ahead. Um, out of respect as much as anything because it's such a chance to showcase his work there, you know, there'll be many events from Parklands next Friday we're going to be doing a broadcast on the hashtag Rocket Kids Club so we've got a family there and I'm sure you can help us um, I should have actually said that Rubik's Cube we've been talking this week to the Rubik's Cube people and they are giving yeah. us a hundred Rubik's Cubes Nice, isn't it? I am I so excited. With, uh, was it David earlier? That was very enjoyable. Wasn't that brilliant? So He's basically, a man passion, isn't he? Yeah. They they reckon, and I'm not sure I can believe it. Although I believe anything after David this morning, they reckon you can learn to do a Rubik's cube quite quickly. And and I was chatting to one of the girls that uh, was one of the ladies who works at. Um, Right, the web's back now. Here it is. Hello, mate. Hello. Did I, you lose your internet for so, a little while? So basically, I, I bought a 50 metre cable to try and connect to my neighbours and they've all got the same problem because basically wherever you buy your internet are from, apart from Virgin, I think, who are on cable or optics, yeah. it, it, it's all BT at the end of the day. And I've had this idea, if you, if you go with BT, at least you're one step further up in the queue. But we've got a problem, so I'm sorry about that. I just need to, check, okay. I just need to check that we're streaming though. Can you see, are we streaming, Sam? Can you see if we're live? I've got my tech team here just checking that. Um, let's have a look. Thing. I reckon we are. I reckon we're live. Do you? Let me just no. have a look. Yeah, you are live. We're live, are we? Oh, it looks I'm looking down. Okay, we are live. Sorry about that, everybody. Yeah, we're live. This is real world. Do we look like we care? We're not afraid we to are. fail. So, so Mr. Finch, we, we the, yeah. we've just done, we've just warmed up, we've just raised the bar. Um, I think one of those special songs that are so special for all of us are um, is uh, "Sweet Caroline." I wonder if that's the song that you could knock out for us. Is that an option? Just wait a second, because I'm going to get some visuals. Song that particularly impinged on my mind, particularly "Sweet Caroline." I guess we all know it, don't we? 
Well, well, well obviously Parkland's another Chris singing it with his children. But hang on, Graham Andre, and Graham, Graham Andre and him <laughs> did it at um, at Primary Rocks, didn't they? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So it's, it's and a special song for a lot of people, hasn't it? Can you just wait one second? I'm just going to um, pull wait. up. I'm going to pull up a video to run behind it because where it began well i'll tell you where it began for us it began in parkins primary that day but then to be honest i think one of the most important things that began for me was primary rocks have you ever been to primary rocks i have been to primary rocks That's i was crew, there last year yeah, you, yeah. this year of course because of the close down no but we but, had a good time but i think that was sweet caroline year wasn't it we was i think yeah, yeah. Oh, we sung uh, something by five as well you did what they sorry slightly run into one don't know these things <laughs> <laughs> Can you, uh, me, can, rocks, can, you, effect, can you move it? yourself like slightly right in the picture a little bit, do you think? Like swivel your camera around a bit or yourself, what, the camera or you? Is that a bit better? Let's swivel your camera around a bit or yourself, what, the camera or you? Is that a bit better? Head in, with, with, you're, you're headless at the moment, you're chopping your head off a little bit, just a touch. Let's get this right. We've got we've got five viewers, I think, but we're going to have millions. It's a bit like your um, you've been doing your pandemic, eight, eight. have we? Eight. Whoa! You've been doing yeah. hashtag pandemic music challenge, and um, yeah. and then kind of crying into your sort of cooking lager that you only had thirty views. And then by tea time it's a thousand, and then about lunchtime it's five thousand. Yeah. It's just remarkable that constant yeah. cycle, isn't it? So um, yeah, let's um, let's crank this up then so let's do the song yeah hang on a second hang on a second i've got to get that on the right thingy bob i'm on the wrong what's it hold on i need to duplicate my screen we good we, good I, go? we are good i'm going to pull you up in a little window there and yeah we're good to go whenever you're ready are we ready here we go one two three four goodness said finch you are you're a rock star you you are wasted we were chatting to the creative director the music director of the one of the biggest stages at glastonbury the other day shangri-la we had chris tofu on the show wednesday and he was saying how they're looking to because shangri-la is what they call off main stage which is all the really crazy creative stuff you know the big fire throwers and all the big pan and stuff and the secret little hollows and the little places you go around the back and they're looking to recreate that as best they can in an online environment, like a Second Life type thing. They're actually talking to the Second Life people about building something like that. And you know, everybody's yeah. gonna say, yeah, but it's not as good. Well, no, it's not as good, but we haven't got that option. So if we can connect and, you know, I think what we're doing today is possibly a bit different, a bit better maybe than a Zoom or a Teams or a Skype. Well, we are using Skype, but at the end of the day, it's your yeah. creativity and that connection. And if we can bring people together some way, it's been remarkable how technology is ago. Oh. You know, the connections that we're making electronically, you know, whether it's Twitter or whether it's Skype or whether it's Zoom, people are having a totally different experience. Of course, it's not the same as being in the same room as people, but it's something we can do that's making this possible. You know, you know there's a lot of loneliness out there. And every time that you reach out, whether it's something like what you're doing today, Chris, or whether it's um, something that we're doing on the Twitter, every time we, give, we reach out, we might be reaching out into the void, you know, 
someone out there it's what they need to make them feel connected and to make them feel that they're still part of something we are we're all still part of something but we just need that reminder and it's amazing what technology is doing okay put it there, put it there mate put it there put your hand up yeah, there look. you're 10 oh, seconds behind you're, you're ten seconds behind Boom. on visuals aren't you there you go <laughs> <The> <laughs> 10 second delay on the visual that's in the trouble thank you so much Ed. you got you got another you got another song do we have another one lined up i can't remember you you asked me, didn't you? You said would I maybe uh, have a little go at All Together Now by The Farm? Oh, um, oh yeah. Which is, you know, it'll be fun for me because I've never sung it before. We'll do. I just think we'll do the chorus. Yeah, let's just do the chorus because uh, you know it's one of those songs that everybody knows the chorus and uh, maybe people don't know the verse. It's a beautiful song. It's about um, the uh, the Christmas Armistice and how the uh, German troops and the British troops came out and played football together. That's what he's singing about. But, um, Absolutely. I it's, think as a as a, yeah. yeah. Um, if you look at the things, it goes, um, Remember that your boy, that your forefathers died, lost a million for a country's pride. It is, it's, anyway, I'm not saying that bit, but we'll do the chorus. But I'll, there have been times when I've wondered how appropriate it is to seize it for this moment, but I think in a way, this is, this feels like a, a wartime spirit lock in, doesn't it? You know, does that, does it yeah. feel appropriate to be picking that song at this time? Yeah, well, he was, um, I've forgotten his name, the chap who wrote it, he was on a thread on Twitter with um, some friends earlier this week, and uh, mind me appropriating this, oh, yeah. and Ken he Mullins, said, no, yeah. listen, run with it, take it. So I don't think he minds at all, I think he's happy with it. Do you remember his name? Let's credit Ken, him. Ken Mullins, I think it was, yeah. And Peter Hooten is, is, a, is a cultural ambassador for Liverpool now, he does a lot of work with the museums, the galleries, representing Liverpool across the city, and Ken is actually a lecturer at the Liverpool Institute of Performing Arts, LIPA. And, and that's a, an organisation that was, um, I believe, co-founded with Paul McCartney, actually, but, but led by an amazing, amazing principal who joined a certain event. So I just love the way this all kind of connects up. You know, the, the Liverpool's good vibes. So yeah. enough, enough of my waffle. You, you, get, you get your UK, mate, and let's smash it. Come on. Yeah, come on. So anyway, yeah, it might be a song about the First World War, but it fits right... It fits perfectly doesn't it with what we're doing today and what we're all trying to do is just make sure I that think so. everybody's pulling together we're doing the right thing we're staying safe we're staying home and we're doing it together if we're doing it apart so let's just sing that chorus through a couple of times just for fun and then i'll let you get on all together now all together Go for it. Let's have it. All together. together now. All together now. All together now. In no man's land. Together no. <laughs> amazing. Amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for that, Ed. Look after yourself. I'm keep gonna on, do my strong. I'm gonna do my keep level safe. best. Gonna do my level best. You had that we performed that then. You performed that on, on main stage there at Glastonbury. Uh, we nice. mixed we mixed you up under the pyramid stage there where you belong. Because in May we're doing a whole month of art activities. We're doing a thing called the hashtag UK Art Takeover. We're having a parliamentary launch on the first of May, which we've been planning for months. We had committee room feet, uh, fourteen lined up for that. Obviously that may or may not happen. But we're then gonna do a two week um, uk tour so we may go to a different town or city doing what we've done to the weekend 29th 30th 31st we're having a, a uk art takeover festival weekend and we announced last weekend that's a collaboration with our dear fred that's darren and ed are going to lead are leading that you're still up for that you haven't had second thoughts on that no yeah no, let's do it do that's it. brilliant so that will be a virtual Come. festival of some sort with everybody welcome all thoughts all walks of life because that's what makes brew ed so special isn't it ed tell everybody about brew ed in a nutshell uh, Brewhead, if you haven't come across us, we uh, get educators, that might be teachers, teacher trainers, academics, just people who are interested, school governors, anybody. We get a good few people together, say 30 to 40, we put them in a pub, we have some really short, snappy presentations, and we have discussions afterwards, because we know it's actually the bit where we're talking, where we do our connecting. We always have a pub quiz, we always have a few laughs, we always have a couple of pints. The point is, people who would never meet, because maybe they work in different sectors within education, getting them to actually talk face to face, make real connections, break down the barriers that sometimes keep us apart and let uh, 
let uh, misunderstandings, shall we call them, creep in. It's a beautiful thing, been going a couple of years now. We got If it wasn't for the close down, we'd be having a brew ed every week somewhere around the country, making real strong well, relationships. I, I, I think what, you, what you're saying about the job. And I think what you're showing there in your education, and there's that 80% we have in common, which we should celebrate and work off and accept those 20% yeah. differences, which might be spe setting specific. They might be because somebody has a political way of thinking, which they're totally entitled to, as we are. We all have our mm. own views. And one thing a lot of people think, because I'm, I, I have a, I, I, I'm outspoken on some things, I am not politically aligned. I'd be just as happy to have a Labour Party MP or Keir Starmer here today as I would a Conservative. Whatever, you know, it's about finding what we have in common as much as anything. And that's what this is all about. We're not politically aligned, we're policy focused. And that's what people have to remember, it's mm. all about policy. Um, so thank that's you right. so much, Ed. We'll, we'll celebrate that at the end of the month. I'm going to cut back now to um, Parkinson's Prime. I'm going to sign off. Thank you so much. You are the man. See you soon. I, I think I'm always putting the right Love hand up. Lost. It's never the right hand. Thank you very much, Ed. Cheers. <laughs> I don't know if everybody's got. I don't know if people have got horrible audio in their ears, but I've got a horrible crackle in my left ear, and I don't know if that's going out live. We're going to wrap up now. We're going to go back to Parkins Primary and remind us what we've done today. We've looked at the amazing work of that young lad there, Rowan and his mum Leanne, how they built a crane out of bits of wood that they found in their backyard. I want to stop this audio because. It doesn't feel like it's my headphones. What is causing that? Any loose connections? Oh, I don't know. Let's mute that. Does that stop it? That doesn't stop it. Does that stop it? That doesn't stop it. Okay, does that stop it? No, I don't know where that's coming from. I don't know if you can hear it, but not to worry. We saw the amazing David Gilday and his Lego robots. We heard from Action Jackson. I'm going to play that again in a moment, I think, because he's incredible. But whatever you do, if you want to win this robot, I've got one of these. I'm getting myself into all sorts of trouble because I buy this stuff and I keep giving it away. But if you want to buy one of these, we're going to have them on our Lego store or on our online store tonight. 45 quid. They're quite dear, but we're going to give them one away. We're giving one of those away for your Luar. So you can't see that, can you? There's the, um, we're giving one of these away today, a little Edison robot. 45 quid on our store later on today, but you can win one with your R. All we want to do is we want you to post on Twitter or Instagram, hashtag Art of Lou Rolls, your art made with a, with a few toilet rolls. Nothing fancy. We'll probably pick the simplest. It'll probably be an early years one, I don't know. But we want to see a parent, a mum, a dad, a carer of some sort, a creative carer working with their young people to make some loo roll art. We're launching the hashtag Rocket Kids Club next Friday. We're gonna go back to Leanne and Rowan. We're gonna show them what we've done. I've got a week to build. Literally, I have got to build Facebook for you this week. Seriously. We're not doing it on Facebook, we're building our own Facebook. And we're actually going to announce a competition that every week you will get the chance to design what it looks like. So the logo, the branding, all the social media for that week to do with hashtag Rocket Kids Club will be designed by you. Now you could be somebody like Rowan in year one. You could be Mr. Dyson getting creative with his post-it notes and his, his magic markers. You could be somebody like Morag Myerskoff. And we want to see the UK's best graphic designers. We want to see the most famous creatives designing a look and feel for our Rocket Kids Club because every week on a Sunday night, we're going to change it for a new one. Facebook doesn't do that. They change their logo every two or three years. Google doesn't do that. They change their logo every two or three years. We're going to change our logo once a week. This noise is terrible in my ear and if it's out there, I can't believe you're still listening. So I'm going to move swiftly on to finish where we started with the wise words of this amazing man. Action Jackson, who wasn't able to join us today in the end, unfortunately. But let's go back to that beautiful evening, a sunny sky, a blue sky, on the top floor of Barclays building, the sort of collaborations we're looking to foster here at Steam Co. Barclays Bank, Google, Lego, LGFL, all these organisations are working with us to work with you and your communities to inspire your children, to help them aim high, to help them find their art, their passion, to help them follow their dreams and be the best that they can be. Uh, my name's Action Jackson and I'm sure you know this song that says, I believe the children are, teach them well, help them lead the way, show them all the beauty they possess inside, give them a sense of pride to make it easier, let the children's laughter remind us how we used to. Oh lovely, look at that. But here's the sad thing, our children are busy on Snapchat. They're busy on Facebook. 
They're busy on YouTube. I believe that one day we're going to have to run a course on how to say hello to a human being. Because really and truly they're stuck on their phones. No more time around the dinner table anymore. Grab your dinner, go upstairs. Dinner on one hand, phone on the other. My thing is helping them to understand that there's greatness within them. When we go to schools and colleges across the UK, we're trying to get them to pass exams. and say, you know, forget exams for a second. You need to understand that there's greatness within you. You need to understand the value of love, respect, determination, resilience, not giving up too easily. I don't get it. Have you tried it? No. So my thing is all about teaching our children to do a couple of things. And the first thing is to dream big. Ever say dream big. Now you see, I did that and everybody's like, yeah, what's he doing? Yeah, if I was in a primary school right now, the kids would be like, eh. So for a second, we're going to go into that primary school space for a second. You're allowed to do so. We're on the 30th floor at the Barclays building. Everybody's like, oh, look at that, guys. No? Everybody say, dream big. Dream big. Act now. Act now. Never give up. Never give up. You're, You're amazing. amazing. You're not singing it. Come on. See, that's the message we Dream need to drum in their heads. Oh, yeah. Act now. Never give up. You're amazing. Sing it to someone. Go. Dream big. Act now. Never give up. You're amazing. Come on. Come on. Say it. Dream big. Act now. Never give up. Never give up. You're amazing. Everybody, everybody, go! Dream big, act down. Never give up, you're amazing. Now stop. Can't thank you enough for checking us out this morning and being part of this. This is a message for everybody in Yorkshire. Chris Tolson, Chris Dyson, all those school communities. This nation will rise up. A day we had in Bradford last summer. Let's do this again in May. Put your hands in the air. We will never be defeated. We're better together. Get well, Chris Dyson. We love you. Here we are at the Tetley in uh, Leeds, the uh, weekender, uh, celebrating making, selling creativity, celebrating community. We're here with uh, playful Leeds with their shipping containers full of toys, families having loads and loads of fun. And over there, over there somewhere, we've got the Steam Co. pop-up, Summer of Love Art pop-up making rockets. Let's go and check it out. Hi, I'm from Lee's Dads, and I'm here to support fathers, bringing fathers closer to their children, spending quality time with their children. I love the rocket activities for families, mums and dads, bringing them together, doing really lovely activities together. What a great day. Just lovely to see all this lovely access to creativity and such a really great vibe here today. Um, so I lecture at Leeds Beckett University on the Playwork degree and this is just the guys with Playbox and all, all of the arts and crafts that are available. It's just fantastic. I had a super afternoon down here at the Tetley weekend uh, working with Playful Leeds and a whole range of um, organisations, Leeds Dads and so on. But I think that the regret I have in a way is that I didn't see anybody I recognised from Parklands or off the Seacroft Estate or a number of the other states around the city. 
maybe those children, maybe those communities don't get into the city as much, I don't know. But the thing about Steam Coast, what we want to be doing is taking days like today, the stuff that you see behind me, we want to take the Steam Coast drop trucks into school communities across Leeds, across Yorkshire, across the country. And that's what we're asking for on this tour. We're asking for organisations to sponsor Steam Coast drop trucks containing everything you need to run a Steam Coast day. But an absolute wowsers of the morning, innovation, technology. like to say that in our opinion it is not suitable for children hey. or for those of you who may have a nervous disposition. Stand up for what you care about and together we turn the world inside out. At a time of political division in Britain, the artists wanted to, to make a strong statement of community and solidarity. Are you going to matter? I hope you will. Thanks for your attention. Wow, well, sat here in Parkins Primary here with, um, with Macaulay and, and his mum. What do you reckon to the rocket launch then, Macaulay? Awesome. Awesome? Yeah. Done that a couple of times, haven't we? So mm. what you, would what, you think of the book then there, being on the front cover of the book? Hold that up for the camera. What do you think of that? I think it's okay. It's amazing. Oh, what do you, tell us again what you, what, what do you want to be when you grow up. Train driver. Train driver. Do you play with that train set much, the Lego train set yeah. still? Yeah. Okay. I've I mainly took it apart and did a massive death ray from the yeah. Lego people. Really? Fantastic. And Karen, exciting day, wasn't it, really? Last end of term coming up now? Yeah. yeah. Nearly, CA6 nearly over. Mm. And you, Three you, weeks. And we had a great time. We went, to, we went to the Science Museum when we were there, didn't we? I remember standing by the locos there. And what, what, what's it meant to you? You know, the, the stuff, the train set, and, and the, the, the stuff we've been Every, doing. Everything amazing. The, the the stuff that he does with it, his imagination is absolutely fantastic. I don't know where it all comes from, to be really? honest. Yeah. I built Lego train stations. And have you um have you have you read stories and you, you read much at home? Yeah. You, you read with him, do you? Carol yeah. as well, yeah. He mainly reads on his own because that's what he's learnt to do, but barring that we do sometimes read together, don't we, when we've got time. 
Yeah. And, and what would your advice be to parents on reading? And yeah, you've just you've just come to the end of year six now. I always think of things I wish I'd done. Is there anything that you you kind of regret? Or any advice for parents? Just read more with your children. Read you learn more. more. It connects with your children more as well when you read. You're going to read that together. Yeah. yeah. Get your dad to read it as well. He don't. He, he can't read. He could read with you, can't he? Yeah. I can. I can you teach him. Exactly. I could teach him how to read. Well, the thing some, some, sometimes if dads can't read, they like to have people reading with them, and that's all part of the experience, isn't it? Yeah. Lovely. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Anyway, right. cheers. Look at the night And it all seems so long So an absolute wowzers of a morning You know, from day Friday uh, Assembly And then innovation, technology And dreams rocketing up to the, to the sky And dreams rocketing up to the to the sky. Twelve days of creative Christmas, a campaign we kicked off when we saw the most amazing film that Elton John made with John Lewis. It's a little bit funny. We saw that film made our own, which had fifty thousand views in just one afternoon, and that inspired us to announce in Cardiff the Twelve Days of Creative Christmas tour. We went from Cornwall all the way through to Carlisle's. In Sheffield, we just stopped off with John Lewis and we were delighted and they gave us a very special present for a very special person. In Bradford, we were delighted to rock up the day that Jimmy Rotherham, the music teacher at Feversham Primary, had been shortlisted. I then showed the children a film of me and my dad and my first ever train set when I was one and discussed how my dad showed me how to use my imagination and how that train set was to me what that piano was to Elton. This one's for you. Today's been very special because I popped up for the 12th day to our friends up there at Parkins Primary and popped back into Mr. Dyson's office and gave a very special present to a very special boy. And rockets will end after the steam engine. Now that it's done, I hope you don't mind. I hope you don't mind that I put down the words. So, what are we doing today then? We're building this. We are leaving the industrial economy and entering the connection economy. You don't have to like it, but it's true. Art is what we call it when someone does something that might connect us to someone else. I hope you really think about those STEAM skills, bringing technology and arts together. Here I am at LGFL's HQ. We've got a meeting up there with uh, John and Bob. We have a bit of chat about this event that's coming up and their plans to support the country's needs, educationally, technologically wise, as we go into a pretty tough period. John, I'm absolutely delighted you've invited me to come and do the closing keynote for your curriculum conference on April the 23rd. But where are we at with that, in a nutshell? Gosh, well, we're still going to go for it, right? You know, we're thinking, you know, 
If we're not going to do it physically, you know what, let's do it virtually and let's do it in a way that no one's done it before. Let's do something really cool and exciting. Okay, well, I announced the other day that I'm calling my part of the day the hashtag LGFL art takeover. Art is the combination of creativity, technology and people. If there's one organisation that gets that, it's you guys. I'm going to make a little announcement here and now then. Well, I'm delighted to say that we've been given one of these JD Easy Robots. I've become known as not only as a, a born again Elton John fan, but also I'm seen as a bit of a rocket man myself for making rockets. It's amazing to make a rocket like that out of a few pieces of paper with a mum or a dad in the school and fire it hundreds of feet in the air with nothing but a puff of air from a bike pump and then to let a dynamite rocket off. So we're launching the, the hashtag Rocket Kids Club for kids who aim high in life. Are you buying that proposition? Absolutely, I love it. I absolutely love it. And what we're going to do is we're going to relocate somewhere in the country and set up a little studio. We're going to do videos. We're going to do online content. And I really want to work with you. Nar Rogers said to us in Liverpool at the end of last year. For me, collaboration is everything. I so believe for us, that from January the 1st, the theme was collaboration. Hashtag Collaborate20. So Nick, we're really looking forward to working with you and supporting you uh, as we move into the future. Let's fist bump to that, shall we? Together, folks, let's make 2020 the start of something special. So an absolute wowsers of a morning, you know, from day Friday, uh, assembly, and then innovation, technology, and dreams rocketing up to the to the sky. Hard work on three, together on six. One, two, three. Hard work. Four, five, six. Together. Hard work on three, together on six. One, two, three. Hard work. Four, five, six. Together. Here we go, man. Hard work on three, together on six. One, two, three. Hard work. Four, five, six. Together. 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 To stand up for what you care about. Let's get it. And this starts right now. Yes, everyone in the room. It's all us. Cleveland on three. One, two, three. I hope that together we create something that the world will remember. What we see changes who we are. When we act together, the whole thing is much more than the sum of the parts. I came a teacher to try and make make that noise. That is brilliant. Thank you. That's amazing. I love art because it's creative. I love art because it's creative and you can just use your imagination. Well, we've had a fantastic first day here at Parkham's Primary School as um, part of our Out of Code Week of Collaborations across Leeds, all set up by Chris Dyson, the amazing head teacher here who we've worked with for years. And this year is, is all part of our hashtag Collaborate 20 year, trying to get organisations, creative companies and individuals to work with us more. And I'm delighted we've had Laura here from LGFL been working with us today. What it, have you been up to today, Laura? I've been helping in sessions with Microbits and the kids have enjoyed coding and learning lots more about that, yep. So you've not been to Parkins before? I or haven't before. and it's been an inspirational trip. Fantastic day, wasn't it? Yeah, it's great. And and LGFL, what, what, what do you guys do? So we're a broadband provider, but we're also a not-for-profit charity, um, and we go and help with schools with their resources and also providing them with protections and all sorts, yeah. 
so firewalls, online learning yep, resources, definitely. and you've got the Adobe Creative Cloud suite we of have, products yep. as well. So secondary schools get a lot more uh, licenses, and primary schools thirty. Great. Fantastic. Yep. What does I mean LGFL? What does the L stand for in that? So that was London, but we are now national. So it's a national grid for learning, and we're going nationwide. Fantastic. Well. <laughs> Our kids need their communities, our schools need their communities. So I think when we get organisations like you working with us at Steamco, we're all about connecting kids with their art, but importantly our communities with our schools. And I think the active word there is connection, you know, it's okay, internet connections, but it's also the value add, it's always the relate also the relationships. But I think most importantly it's the, the support and commitment from companies like you coming out here to Leeds to help us. So thank you very much. Really You're appreciate very it. welcome. It's been great. Thanks for the invite. We'll see you again. Cheers. <laughs> thank you. Let's get you down the station. <laughs> Parklands is an extraordinary example in terms of the work that the school is doing within the community, um, you know, the, the work that Chris Dyson has, had, has done um, to um, uh, bring families in over Christmas, providing presents, all of those things. But the other point, and this is the thing when you go into Parkland School, is the work that he has done to raise the self-esteem of young people in his school. And they have gone from being the worst performer in maths education to what, one of the top nationally through the work that he's done with, his, with timetables in particular. I urge any of you who don't know about this work to go and see um, what he's actually done. And the biggest thing for me um, being concerned about particularly young lads falling behind in education, this, this head teacher has made it cool to study maths. It is extraordinary how he has done it. And I think, you know, there are obviously other examples around the city of fantastic practice in appalling circumstances and people really rising up and above and beyond um, what they're asked to do um, if you look at in, in a pure contractual basis. So we need to um, recognise that extraordinary work, give um, credit where it's due, but really reinforce our commitment to doing everything that we can to make sure that schools get the, the funding they need, that they're not faced with losing classroom support assistance, that they're not having to make the really difficult decisions that mean so many children don't get the, the richness of their educational experience that they should. Um, I do want to um, reference the... the um